the Force Loses Podcast with Brad and Ken. Welcome, one and all, to the inaugural episode, our first outing, our maiden voyage, if you will, of what we are going to affectionately call the Force Losers Podcast. My name's Kevin. I am one half of your hosts. The other is sitting right across from me. What's your name, bud? Bradford. You. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> okay, so um, I guess the the most logical place to start would be the intentions behind this show and what we are setting out to do. It's Kevin Smith, uh, the godfather of podcasting as far as I'm concerned, that stated this, I think, in the most simplistic and eloquent way was podcasting is for everyone. If you have a passion about anything and you can speak to it, you can do a podcast. And that's that's in that spirit, we're doing this. Um, the show essentially is just going to be about fandom, fandom across many different genres. Um, for me, it's comics and, and movies and uh, and even literature to some extent and you know bradford's got his own interests uh usually probably games mostly Mm -hmm. uh all kinds all platforms uh gonna be going into the internet on that one okay uh youtube right um in a world where a youtuber a professional youtuber can afford a ferrari hey you know that is i don't know how to feel about that necessarily i know right i don't know if like you're a dick for making money that easily <laughs> with like I, I i don't know if i would say minimal effort but perceived minimal effort yeah right? like are you just a, or are you just that you know or are you that entrepreneurial yeah. are you that capable of like capable of something that i'm not he he's really not he's my age oh well, no, that i know that see it, i'm older than you so that it, makes me it, feel like it, shit it kicks you right in the balls oh, it? no shit man so that's Kind of the aim is, you know, talking about fandom and just fucking having a conversation. Um, so it is it is September 2nd as of recording this episode, and I think I would be remiss this show coming from San Antonio, Texas, not to at least touch on uh, what happened with Harvey. Um, so, of course, our thoughts are with everyone in Houston and in that area that's been affected. Uh, San Antonio, of course, was trying to be cool with everything. <laughs> We were trying to, to not <laughs> we were trying to not make a whole lot of noise and just help our friends over to the southeast over there. But then someone got wind <laughs> that there might be a gas shortage. And <laughs> it turned into Mad Max within like six hours. Yeah. It was I, I just recently hacked a midget off the hood of my car trying to get home. <laughs> really? Yes, really. <laughs> Okay, now, no, you have to explain this now. If you're going to say something like that, now you've got to give me the story behind it. Well, no, it. because um, with where I work, I'm the tallest one there, as, okay. as it normally is, as you know. Mm-hmm. And he is, uh, just an aside, folks, Bradford is like any geek you've ever thought you've seen. Like the, the what, a, what a geek would look like if you just thought about it in a six foot four, six foot five package. Yeah, about yeah. 300 yeah. pounds. Yeah, he's a, he's a fucking barbarian. <laughs> Anyway, go back to your story. All right. So, no, I mean, I'm as as with work, I'm typically the tallest one there. And I think the shortest person there is about five foot four. Uh-huh. And she has to she she has to borrow people's cars sometimes because her car recently got in a wreck. Right. So today, I mean, I was I was nice about it and she was going on lunch and we need another person to go on lunch with her and he had his car, but so I actually gave her my keys and she drove okay. my car. I mean, she owns the exact same car, just a different color, oddly right. enough. Right. And she went and took her lunch. Well, apparently her mom also took her her lunch. Mm-hmm. And they missed each other, so then we had to send them, we had to call them and get them together and everything. Her mother is a midget. Like, like a real... Like a real midget. Like, oh, wow. Like an actual little person. Actual little person. Okay. Okay. And so they ended up meeting in front of the GIF, or the place I work. Right. No names. But with where they, where they met, they were parked in the parking lot, and her mother sat on the hood of my car. <laughs> <laughs> like, and my car is low. I have a gallant. <laughs> and she that. literally had to hop up to get up there. And she, like, sat and she had her little legs just dangling. Oh, was it cute? It was adorable. Fuck yes. But, I mean, so I had a midget on the hood of my car. And when you referenced Mad Max, that just made me think about it. <laughs> oh, 
Whoa. So, <laughs> so basically, like, it's been three days or two days. You know, three days. It, it started on Thursday, and it's been three days since San Antonio has uh, run out of gas. Now, a lot of people are saying that um, the people freaked out. So it got wind on social media, spread like wildfire, and everyone freaked out and went to the gas pumps. I mean, there, there's pictures of people with, like, 65, 55-gallon drums filling those up. Okay. So, and not passing judgment. I don't know if you're a dude that's got, got farm equipment and you got to get that done. I don't know. So, um, my wife and I just got gas today, like just now. And it was, we had to go get my mom's car, drive it to the gas station. And then we looked like the assholes that we were because we're filling up gas cans. We're not filling up my mom's car because she had the presence of mind in a town, a couple towns over to fill up over there. So we're, we're looking like assholes pumping these gas cans. And I'm just waiting for someone to come out with like a crowbar, you know. And, I mean, it's, it's I, I, I know exa- I'm exaggerating when I say Mad Max, but it's not that far off, man. I mean, I think I was coming home from work on Thursday when this whole thing started. And it took me two hours, two hours to make a, mm-hmm. you know, a 20-minute drive. I mean, it was insane. Um, so that's kind of what's going on and in our lives, but that's not the show. So we're going to go ahead and start the show now. And we're going to talk about, uh, fandom things, things we're into. And then we're going to talk about, so I'm going to start this one off and I'm going to talk about defenders that came out on Mm. Netflix. Yes. 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 And I know a lot of people had opinions about iron fist. I know a lot of people had some, uh, we'll say emotionally invested opinions on iron fist, but if there was a misstep, if that's the way you're thinking, Defenders was the correction. Um, from start to finish, the show just had no had no moments that I was not completely sucked into it, you know. And and I it, it, I was I watched it primarily when I was in Vegas just a couple weeks ago. We were on vacation, and I would watch it at the end of the day when we come home, and you know we'd be it'd be like five in the morning, so sun's coming up, and I'm sitting there watching Defenders in bed, and like I I. There are moments in when I'm in Las Vegas, my last thought should be, what am I watching on Netflix, right? Of course. But there were actual moments where I would like sneak moments just to watch a scene or two. <laughs> like I was that engrossed into it. And then my wife hated me. She was, <laughs> hated me for it because she was like, you're still watching a show? You're in Las Vegas. I'm like, it's the Defenders. Um, so what are your opinions on that show? Broad opinions. And we'll kind of dissect it as we go along. A lot, a lot of right. Mm-hmm. A lot of win. Mm-hmm. Very much what you would want or really expect from a genuine, good Marvel TV series. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, it, it's, it's really interesting how they took something that is, I wouldn't say necessarily too obscure like the Defenders. I mean, the Defenders yeah. were, have been around yeah. for a long time. I mean... Before Doctor Strange was considered an Avenger, he was a defender. Mm-hmm. At least, if I'm wrong, please, to the listeners, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Don't, don't make me look like an asshole up here. <laughs> um, but they took something that is generally not well known. I mean, you got your X-Men, you got your Avengers, and you got things that are like the marquee titles. The Defenders really is, is kind of deeper cuts. And, I mean, I know the, the characters in the Netflix series are not the original Defenders. Um, but they... they did stay true to that concept, and I love how they kept it low to the ground. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a, yes. it's a grand storyline, and it, it spans <clears throat> several different television <clears throat> shows, essentially. Oh, yeah. But I, I love how low to the ground it is when you have the Avengers dropping a city. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have the Defenders that are they're 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 fucking shit up. They're they're fighting in a lot of hallways, man. Like a lot of contractors made good money <laughs> off the Defenders, you know. I, th- I think more Luke Cage than anyone else. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I, Harlem has to have, like, a, a contractor <laughs> business that is booming because of Luke Cage. Like, oh, you walked through another door? Oh, I got a guy for it, you know? But, I mean, I, I, like, I, and I loved how from episode one, they, I like how they kept them completely separate. And you had, yes. for at least two episodes, you had these arcs that were just going back, or two or three episodes, yeah. going back and forth and back and forth. And then I love how just it was they they made them all converge at the right time. I, at least it felt like the right time. Yeah. Because um, I mean, you because you have those personalities that do clash, mm-hmm. but at the same time they can they're they're human enough 
or should I, well, I don't know if I should say human enough, but they're they're the right kind of people to put that aside, right? And do what needs to be done, right? And I, and I like that you touched on a human factor because they, this is, I mean, they all have exceptional abilities, you know, um, but it's not like it's it's not Tony Stark flying through New yeah. York, you know yeah. what I mean? So these yeah. these abilities, while they're, I mean, you got a dude whose hand glows, right? I mean, so that's pretty fucking exceptional, yeah. but. It doesn't feel like they're they're broadcasting it. I mean, and, uh, and it and it manifests itself in the fact that there's only one dude wearing a fucking costume. <laughs> That's Matt Murdock. <laughs> and it's and it only made me laugh because it always it it made me think about like he's the only dude in a costume. <laughs> so he's kind of like that blind guy that like is wearing a really loud outfit and has no idea. He's the only one with a secret identity, though. I mean, <laughs> that's true. Who, that's true. Who's gonna take? daredevil serious if they find out oh he's the blind lawyer yeah true who I mean, loses half of his true. cases it was just funny it's just funny like there's one dude in like a kevlar <laughs> costume with the fucking devil it, it, horns and shit and then you got like jessica jones she's wearing the same fucking thing yeah, yeah. like chick does not change her clothes excuse me sir but there was a scene in there where i do believe he was wearing a giant either it was either a really big sock or like a ski mask it was a scarf. backwards it was a scarf oh no that was daredevil wearing a ski mask backwards yeah oh no because like when they were in the they were in the first hallway fight yeah. he was wearing jessica jones scarf okay well yeah that one too Ugh. but i'll tell you this it, it is cool to see daredevil in costume you know oh, and, and not like a, a leather judas priest costume you know <laughs> like it, daredevil's costume in marvel it makes sense and i and it, and it, it reminds me kind of like uh christopher nolan's batman bat suit it's, it looks very functional you know really functional you got an opinion on that on your face do you have an opinion on that i i have a bit of an opinion and a okay. bit of a question on that one okay okay we can take it aside am, am i the only one who noticed that like in the in the old daredevil movie uh-huh. even then the actor really badly wanted to play back yeah. In that bar scene where he's sitting in the rafters. Yeah. And they're like, is that guy real? Yeah, he's real. Yeah. And then it's, what do you want? Justice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, you know what? I, we, I have opinions on the bat flick, though. Oh, yeah. But we're going to get into that. In, in a later. later. Uh, and, and it's nothing negative. Like, I mean, uh, everyone is going to see, the further in we get into the show, that I have an incredibly low bar. My bar is maybe, you know, three-fourths of an inch off the ground. Um, mostly just because I'm, I'm just stoked to see it all. So everyone's oh, yeah, like, no, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to defend and love every movie that everyone hates. See, essentially. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm honestly the same way. I mean, I might have a little higher of a bar, right? But for me, like, I'm, I'm very much on the internet, right? And when you're a fan of the internet, mm-hmm. you have to accept all content. You, right. you can't really be picky. I mean, content is content. If it gives you something to watch, watch it. Right. Uh, so, it's a fucking sound opinion on that. I mean, like, so looping back into Daredevil's costume, it is, and it is cool. I honestly think it's cool that he's the only guy that's going to wear that costume and rock that costume. Like, I mean, Luke, I mean, actually, you know what? Did Luke Cage ever change his shirt in The Defenders? Only when it was torn. Yeah, because he got shot up like a motherfucker. Yeah. I, I don't no. even think he ever changed the hoodie. Uh, the hoodie, no. No, he I always wore the so. jacket. But you know what? I think there were several times didn't uh, before like anything really went down. He would actually take off the hoodie. Oh yeah, I know they, they put him in a yellow shirt for like a fraction of a second. Yeah, and another cool throwback to the comics. Made look not like as was... not as throwback as they did in, in the Luke Cage show where they they actually had him like with the the Power yeah. Man headband and stuff. Oh Jesus, that was a cool that was a little cool moment. Um, oh dude, we we cannot we cannot talk about Defenders and not talk about fucking Helen Ripley. We can't not talk oh. about Dana Barrett. Fucking Slay oh. Weaver. I, slay bitch. That, that, is, that is my, uh, with my wife, that is my one cheat. Oh. If, I, if I could ever get with Sigourney Weaver. Like no, no there's, no, there's I don't, no age limit on that either. Right? I don't give a shit. Yeah, it, she'd be like 92 mm. years old in a nursing home mm. and wreck those hips. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, well, we learned something about Bradford today. <laughs> Um, but I mean, dude, she fucking killed it in that show. She fucking killed she kills, it. She kills everything. And I love, yes, <laughs> bitch does. And, and I, I love how they, they, how they fucking wrote her character. Oh yeah. And how they, they genuinely like over, over a, over an arc, you kind of got the idea like, holy shit, this bitch is old. Like your first inclination oh, yeah. is like, oh, she's a member of the hand. She, she's dying from the beginning. Right. And like, and your first inclination is like, okay, you know, she's, she's from the hand. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And then it's, they start to kind of slowly leak rich, it in a rich white person yeah they go in the hand okay it's like yeah all right yeah you're, up, you're, 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 you're spending a lot of time in time in uh in skyscrapers man you're spending a lot of time in those yeah, exactly um 
but I, and I like how they just they slowly kind of rolled it out that you start to realize how old she is as in the character, mm-hmm. and then it then and I love how they they I love each the, one of those characters from from Daredevil season one all the way over the hand characters. Those were all fingers of the hand, and I love how they how I don't know. I like how I came to that conclusion where I was like, oh, oh okay, I yeah. get it now. <laughs> I like how they did that, and then I mean spoilers, they killed her, right? So they they kill they kill Sigourney Weaver. Uh, they kill one of the members of the hand, but who fucking killed her is fucking. That's that's the shit right there. It's fucking Electra. Mm-hmm. You know, Electra is the black sky because you remember that from like season two. Of yeah, Daredevil. I mean, well, but they talked about that. They actually talk about it in the second season of Daredevil, right. where it's like you were meant to lead, right? And then you know, they in the very beginning you see her kind of being subjected and brainwashed, and you're like, this ain't gonna last. Right. Right. Yeah, you got that really early on when you're watching season two. Yeah. And, you know, but just the fact that they, they, I mean, I completely forgot about Electra at that point. Like, I remember she died on the rooftop, you know, I, I forgot about her at that point. Yeah. So when they, when That's... they fucking, when they're putting that thing in there and then they, they're pouring that shit in there and you see the fucking fist, it was my thought. I was like, Holy shit! That's fucking Electra. Yeah, that's fucking Electra. Well, she's the fucking black that's her. Star. That's her whole story. Yeah. That's that's the story behind her, and the, they stayed true to that. And that yeah. was so awesome. Yeah, and they, I think they really handled that character really well. Oh yeah. You know they how they slowly once again. I think everything in the show is about pace. Mm-hmm. They set a really good pace. But that's always what Marvel's been good about. Always, especially on the shows. Especially yes. on the shows. Yes. I know. I know there are probably people listening to this. They're like mm, boardroom scenes. Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a pace, but it's rather slow. Yeah, but um, I mean, honestly, the buildup's so much, so much worth it. Right, and I think that, like, especially in the case of Iron Fist, you know, you may have your opinions on that show, but you you need that show to get to Defenders, and you need that. Yeah. Not only just the show itself as a placeholder, but just the content there to know what's happening in Defenders. Exactly. Um, now, granted, I think Defenders. I remember some people were complaining about how short it was, but I, I felt like it was a really. It's a good first taste. Yeah, it was a good. It was it fit for the story they were trying to tell. Exactly. Like I mean, every show is is amazing because they take a long time to tell one story, and I, I really enjoy that. But this was it was um, succinct and it was just at a really they set a really good pace for that show, um, especially and I just love, I love how it all culminates. I love yes. how it all culminates, yes. and you get that you get that amazing shot of all the defenders together. And you know, ultimately, spoilers, they win, right? Aww. But not without some, not without some. It, in, in every movie, everyone knows that the good guys are always going to win, unless right. it's a horror movie. I'll give them that much. Ever, everyone knows the good guys are always going to win. It's how they get there. It's what they have to do to get through to that point. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's worth watching these things. And especially the, I mean, just the writing is just fucking. Oh yes. knock it out of the park, and it's... they they give every character enough time as well. Like you never feel like they're focusing on one person yes. too much. I'm I'm um, honestly waiting for a time when Marvel is not outdoing itself. I really am. I don't know if we're gonna get there, man. I, mean, I really I know, but that's the thing is you gotta you wait for it, and it just makes these these things so much better. Yeah. Well, because you know what you're getting, you know you're gonna get really good exactly. quality. Like you're yes. like even when you know we got uh, Thor coming up in November, November third, mm. Thor Ragnarok. I'm gonna go get Ragnaroked. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! Um, you know it's going to be you know it's going to be a Marvel movie because they all have a very similar tenor, right? Oh, yeah. Like they have a very similar tenor, and but they each have their own um, their own little identity and their own little flair. And I and I like especially in the Thor in the case of the Thor movies, from Thor to Thor: The Dark World to now Thor: Ragnarok, they each have their own tone. Oh yeah, they each have their own even like color palettes. Like the original Thor, the first Thor was like a it's like a it was like a kind of like a fun field trip. You know, in a way, but it was also like, you know, an Asgardian in a Western. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and it was, it, 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 it was, it had its own kind of thing because it had to, of course, introduce Thor and all that. Yeah. But then the Dark World, not only that, it had its own color palette too. It was really darker. It was, it was really, it, like, was, it was the end of the world. Right. Or less. Right. And that had its own vibe and its own thing. And then mm-hmm. Thor coming up, you know, Ragnarok's going to have its own thing. But yeah. we are, we are going to talk about that after we see it. Yes, uh, we will be doing a show on Thor. Rag- I think it, uh, you, you can't, huh? We we can't not no, we can't. do a show. I mean, because you got in November, you've got Thor Ragnarok and Justice League coming out. I mean, that's that's going to be two things. And then on top of that, in, in December, you got the Last Jedi, and I, and I know because mm. we probably didn't explain this at the top of the show, but this is going to be a once a month podcast. It's going to be once a month. So every month, we're going to take a, a fairly large chunk of stuff that's happened or we've seen, and we want to 
talk about, and that's going to be uh, each month's show. So October, we're going to uh, do a trip to Alamo City Comic Con here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, this will be Brad's first con, yes, as I understand. I, I'm a, what would it be, con virgin, yeah, I guess. That was I mean, me back in May, man, and we'll talk about that at that show. So um, before we get done with Defenders, I do want to talk about that initial fight between Luke Cage and the Iron Fist. Oh. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, that was that was so cool, especially because like, you know that the you know Luke Cage and Danny Rand are very close friends in the in the comic books. They're very close friends. So to see their to see their relationship in the in the Marvel, uh, the Netflix verse, to see their relationship start like that was really cool because you got to see. I mean, just just the just the slow motion shot of of the Iron, Iron Fist, Fist rocking yes. Luke Cage's noggin. Yes, yes. See yes. that shock wave go through. Mm-hmm. And then the, you know, you had the best part where Luke Cage had to go home, <laughs> get some ice, get some ice, and then you know the chick that all she'd ever seen of him was just being unbreakable. He's sitting there with ice. That was cool. I like the visuals. On what that. hit you? A trunk? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like just about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty it was much. A, it was a skinny white dude. <laughs> Um, okay, so I mean, I think I think we've covered Defenders pretty well. Yeah. So now we're gonna move on to something that just recently ended, man. Oh. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones season seven. Oh man, that killed me. That season was so fucking good. Um, and I, I know I'm know I'm gonna get some hate for this, but this one's mostly gonna be you. I I I cannot catch up on this. Yeah, Brad. Brad is a is a not only a, a convert. Gin. There you go. He's also yeah. a Game of Thrones virgin. He is dipping his toe in there, and he's and he's and he's got to take time. It's gonna take time. He just started watching the seasons and things. So you know, sorry, Brad. I'm gonna spoil the fuck out of season seven. You, you know what? You're all right because I mean, I've I've heard a lot. You can't go anywhere without hearing at Hodor. least somebody yeah. talking about Game of Thrones in some way or another. Yeah. Someone's I, gonna say I know Hodor, some, and then the I person know who next dies. to him is gonna start crying. Yeah. And then that person's gonna start crying. Yeah. Because, you know, hold the fucking door. Oh. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> that, oh, that fucking I, moment. I was... never even saw that. I... No, you will. You'll understand, dude. You'll understand how quickly that moment hits you in oh, the feels. Well, and that's the thing. I haven't even seen that part. Yeah. And knowing what happens, it already hits me in the feels. Because yeah. I do know somewhat about Hodor. <laughs> right. And, like, there was, I think there was two moments in that show. Because my wife and I watched that show. We started watching it together. And that's, like, literally the only thing that we have shared common interest in. Um, so... There, I think there were two moments in that show that truly affected us. And one was uh, uh, Stannis Baratheon's uh, daughter being burned at the stake. That what one, the fuck? Th- well, no, it, it was, dude, that one affected me deep because it was like, it was so, so fucking like uh, it primal. Just, it just, it hits you somewhere that just disturbed mm. you because you, you're hearing a little girl scream as yeah. fire burns her alive. Like that affected me. I walked away from that like not feeling good about myself, you know. Wow, so man. that was one moment, and it was one moment that I was like, I was just that that one shocked the shit out of me. Like they fucking put that in a show, man. Well, it's Game of Thrones. I mean, right? I mean, they they pushed it, and then the other moment was, of course, hold the door. I mean, there is that was that was fucking sad, man, because you had this this dude who he's he is probably what Hodor is like the purest fucking character in that show. Hands down. He has, like, no fucking blood on his hands. <laughs> he's, he's got no skeletons in his he's closet. He's, like, the nicest fucking guy. Exactly. Exactly. So you, you have this guy who's just a pure character. A pure character. And he does that fucking most her- heroic self-sacrifice there could. And it's just holding a door. It wasn't like someone's last stand swinging a sword. He's just fucking holding this door closed, and he's getting torn up. And all you hear, you, all you see is that flashback to the to the past with him. Hold the door, hold the door, and I, I swear to God, your your heart just gets wrenched, fucking wrenched. And that's 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 an amazing fucking piece of television. So, season seven, Brad, buckle your fucking seatbelts, man. <laughs> From the sound of it, I'm. It it fucking starts off, and you you know that, you know the Night King's coming, the army of the dead's coming. They are getting closer to that wall, and. You've got Jon Snow, newly crowned King of the North, uh, trying to figure out how he's going to stop this stuff and how he's going to fight this army of undead and these White Walkers that can only be killed with dragon glass or Valerian steel if you got it, right? So he's got to figure that out. And then at the same time, Cersei is being a bad bitch in King's Landing, and she is 
getting ready to wage war against fucking everybody. Like, fucking everybody. Well, I mean, no one likes her. Well, exactly. And you've got, you got the king in the north doing his thing, and she feels threatened by him because he just fucking... They just kicked the shit out of the Boltons. It's the North. Yeah, you know, they just they just kicked the shit out of the Boltons with the fucking Battle of the Bastards. An amazing piece of fuck. That's Battle a, of the Bastards? That's, that's, the, that's the, what that's they the, call it? Yes, that's, that's the last. Awesome. It's like the second to last episode, I think, of season six. And it's it's an incredible, incredible piece of cinematography and writing. Um, so she's feeling threatened by Jon Snow, of course. And then all, everyone knows Danny Targaryen. She's fucking coming across that sea. She's got her dragon. She's got the un- Unsullied. She's got the the Dothraki. She is. She's she's Doesn't, strapped. That's the chick with three dragons, right? Yeah. Does she yeah. still have three? All I ever see is one. Well, okay. You're cool with me spoiling shit. Yeah. Right? No. Okay, no. Okay. So there's there is a moment in season seven where, uh, okay, I'm gonna try to spin this yarn in a in a in a way that <laughs> like does it justice. Okay. Um, Jon Snow eventually goes down to, uh, uh Dragonstone, where okay. Daenerys yeah. Targaryen made landfall in West Westeros. And he's trying to get her help to fight the army of the dead. He, Jon Snow is the guy who's like, you know, fuck all these petty little fights. There's an he, army of zombies. He's the only one with a brain between his ears. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. And, well, no, I mean, Danny, Danny knows what the fuck she's doing and she knows what she's about. But, you know. He's not, he's not trying to be He's king got pure of intentions. Yeah. He has yeah. no ulterior motives, man. He, he even took the throne, the, the, the title of king in the north. He took it very reluctantly. He didn't want it, you know, but... If someone is going to have it, it might as well be him. Um, so he goes down to Dragonstone trying to convince uh, Danny Targaryen that, hey, this, this army's coming and this is the priority. You know, whatever you got going on with Cersei, fuck that. It's not important. This is important. And, of course, they've got the, uh, the friction between the characters going on, and they, they handled that in a really good way, essentially, but a little creepy. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Oh, <laughs> uh, Creepy in Game of Thrones is not very yeah. reassuring to me. So in trying to convince them that there is an army of undead coming, they came to the decision that it's not Daenerys Targaryen that they have to necessarily convince, it's Cersei, because she's the fucking chick that's just seen oh, red. God. She wants everyone dead. Well, I mean... No, oh, because she's been, you know, she's been fucking with people for the last seven seasons. And exactly. And was... last season, season six, shit, shit she... came home to fucking roost. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... In order, they say, in order to convince Cersei, they have to bring one of these undead <sighs> things back down south, and they're going to take this undead thing to King's Landing, right? So Jon Snow goes back up north, and he's got a couple of his wildling friends. Um, you know, they all went up there, and uh, of course, uh, the Hound and those dudes from uh, the Brotherhood, they went up there, and they, you know. In trying to capture one of these undead things, they actually end up getting surrounded by the entire army of the undead. Well, of course. Now, here's where the fucking shit got serious, because then, you know, while they're being surrounded and people, you know, some of their cohorts are dying and they're being surrounded by this army of the dead, fucking down comes Danny Targaryen with, you know, she's riding on the back of one dragon and the other ones are in tow. And Sweet. she comes and fucks up the army of the undead and they, they all jump on the dragon and shit. And as they're trying to get away... The Night King fucking pulls a spear and lances one of the fucking dragons. He just he overhand chucks it and lances one of the dragons. And then that's she lost a dragon. So, yeah, spoilers, she lost a dragon. Okay, so she's um, got two at least. She still has two. But here's the problem, man. On the <laughs> second to last episode, they show the Night King go up to that dragon and oh, fucking shit. resurrect it. So oh, they have shit. a fucking ice dragon. And then, of course, in the, at the end of the season, they, they fucked up a whole section of the wall. Um just going to throw this out should... there. <laughs> Just going to throw this out there. The same thing happened in World of Warcraft. Did it? Yeah. Uh, Just saying. Parallels, right? Yeah. <laughs> totally. So, like, yeah, that that mm. was, that season just killed me. And then, of course, you know, it, it, it ends with the, uh, the, well, it's not weird for Game of Thrones. Incest is no fucking, no, it's, it's no uh, stranger to Westeros, so. You've, you've got midgets having sex with, like, six different women at the hey, same man, time. Hey, man, he was a, he was hey, a Ty- whore. Uh, oh, I know, he was Tyrion. A whore. Hey, I'm a fan of Tyrion. I'm going to tell you that right now. He's, he's behaved himself for, like, the last two Yeah, didn't, um, he finds, like, a barmaid or something, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a really sad storyline. It's really, it's, it's sad for Tyrion, man. It's sad oh, for Tyrion. Oh, she dies. Yeah, but Damn not it. in the way you think, man. Not in the way no? you think. She, she, his, his love interest does not, um, she does not die in the way you think. 
Uh, hmm. it, it's a real sad storyline for Tyrion. I'm not going to spoil that one because that's yeah. No, hopefully that's... by the time you get caught up, you won't even remember what happens in season seven, and you'll you'll, <laughs> you'll kind of have that that initial reaction to it. You know what? I'm I'm still going to have the same reaction to it because I mean, again, it's being a fan of the internet. Content is content. Watching right. it's still going to give me the same joy and right. ev- and everything. Right, and it, and it's and and, it, and on writing alone, that show is worth is worth watching it just because and it's worth watching it again to be oh, fair. Yeah. It is so well written. And of course the visuals are great and it, it, it grounds itself in a, in an odd reality in a way that just keeps you hooked to it because it feels like it's not too, um, the best way to describe, to, to describe like why game of Thrones works, I think is, is to actually, uh, reference Tolkien. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tolkien once said that, uh, he, he didn't, um, I'm paraphrasing, of course, and you know the Tolkien people will probably tell me if I am, but he did not believe in suspension of disbelief, right? Yeah. He, did not, he did not feel that that was necessary. You shouldn't have to suspend disbelief. The story should be as such that it just feels like a second reality. Yeah. You know, it just feels like it's grounded. You're, you're telling in, a story. Right, and then in, it's, it's, it's tactile in a way. You know, yeah. it's something like, okay, this doesn't look too fantastical that it doesn't, it doesn't feel like uh, uh, anchored. In reality, in some way, you don't need Michael Bay to make a two million dollar movie. Right, there doesn't have to be an explosion every quarter second. Exactly. You know, can they just stop with the transformer movies? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I hit a sore spot. Not really. I mean, I like them. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love the Transformers movies, I, but I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not like a diehard fan where it's like, excuse me, sir, <laughs> you don't need to talk about that, <laughs> right? How dare you talk about Optimus Prime that way? Um, I don't know. I, I dig the first one. Man. I, I was into the first one. It was kind of cool. Well, I mean, it's always um, the first movie that they right, usually yeah. hit right the nail on the head. I, I, I can see that. So, God, did we even get to the fact that uh, we got on a tangent there about the incest? Um, <laughs> but at the end of, the, of season seven, Where, game, of course, you, <laughs> so of course, at the end of season seven, you see uh, Danny Targaryen and Jon Snow. They they hook up, even though they're totally related. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, it's 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 like. It, you know, it, this is why it's weird. It makes you feel weird about it because you're like, oh, that totally makes sense. They have really good, you know, they have really good chemistry. They should fuck. And then you're like, oh, wait, but they're related. Ah, but they're meant to fuck. Oh, well, how do I feel <laughs> about that then? How do I feel about someone who's related who's meant to fuck? It, it messes with you. But it Plays with your emotions. Yeah, but it, it had to happen. It had to happen. It had to happen because there had to be, like, there had to be a clear united front against not only the army of the undead but at the at the time some of these motherfuckers got to get along <laughs> well yeah i mean essentially because if they don't they all fucking die yeah I mean. and in in season seven they they i mean trucy yeah, yeah trucy cersei <laughs> did not she did not change her character in any way like she has not grown at all unless you have unless you you factor in like she's grown very good at fucking with things and killing people. And her brother. Don't forget her brother. Yeah, she fucks her brother pretty good. He keeps, he keeps coming back, man. Does he really? Well, I mean, he... Didn't he get sent to the wall? No. No, well, he didn't? Well, I've heard that. that. Like that. about that. Okay. I was about to say, I've, I know I've heard rumors is like he gets sent to the wall or something. There was talk about that, but it never happened. Um, but, you know, yeah, Cersei must be doing something right because he keeps coming back. Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, there's actually a really good mo- a moment in season seven where Cersei, they all have a, a meeting and they all see this thing of the undead. Uh, Cersei's there. Danny's there. Uh, Jon Snow is there. Okay, so they do actually get something from the of the undead right. to the King's <coughs> right. Landing. Right, they did get it out of uh, the wild, out beyond the wall, and they got it back to King's Landing, and they show Cersei this, this undead thing, and she finally understands that, okay, this is really going on, and she talks about, okay, well, you know, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, of course. But yeah, essentially, I mean, she says, "Oh yeah, you know, we'll, um, you know, we'll we'll join you guys. We'll 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 suspend. We'll we'll call for a truce. We'll suspend hostilities for right now." Why do Why do people keep trusting this bitch? Okay, now see, I like how you said that because you're already you already know the character. You're yeah. already dialed into the character no, frequency, just, right? You don't so trust what happens is thing she puts that. she she says that okay, I'm going to commit you know men and no. treasure, blood and treasure to this to this fight against the undead. I like to see that and. Out. At the end of the day, man, she was bullshitting him. She of was course. like, "I'm not sending him shit. I'm not." Was, I'm not was she him walking them through through a garden when she told them that? No, no, it was actually oh, in an old. It, they actually met in an old arena that was meant for like dragons, essentially. Oh, well, so that's <clears> new. during the uh, during the Targaryen days. Yeah, um, days of the Mad King. Well, even before before the Mad King never had a dragon. Well, I know yeah, that. Daenerys but like, was the first Targaryen. That, to get a that's as far like, like uh, with dragon. where I'm at in the story. That's as okay. far back as I know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that big 
fucking arena. But at the end of the day, she's just bullshitting him. She's like, "Fuck you guys." Yeah, no, no I'm gonna. I, she said, "I'm gonna you, fucking." While you're up there fighting the North, fighting the the King of the the, the Night King yeah. up there, I'm gonna be down here. I'm gonna be fucking solid. Uh, you know. Uh, consolidating all my shit. So when oh, you Lord. when you look at this way, I'm gonna be ready for you. There's a reason everyone wants this bitch dead, right? Because I mean, there was a, there was an episode in there where it it fucking feels like Danny's just getting her dick kicked. Like if she had a dick, it'd be fucking sore as shit because it'd be just getting kicked over and over you, again. You mean John Snow's? You, no, no, <laughs> I'm talking Danny. Like if Danny had a danger, man, it was it was roughed no, up. No, I know that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> I get you. I get you. Fucking so. There's a moment there where, where Cersei's she's making all the right moves, man. She's mucking, she's making all the right news, and she's she, giving. She's actually level headed. No, no, not even level headed. Or... She's just kind of staying ahead of him, and mm. you know she's she's giving Danny a black eye. But then, of course, you know Daenerys Targaryen goes ahead and turns that around with fucking dragons. Well, yeah. And she burns up an entire fucking caravan of Lannister men and Tyrell men. Just fucking messes them up. Hey, Kevin, you could say that's her trump card. Oh fuck. Man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, you went below. You went below the belt. I, you the know belt. me. <laughs> so, actually, yeah, there's actually some pretty stark fucking parallels between Cersei <laughs> Lannister and Donald Trump. Yeah, they're both fucking out of their gourd. Um, I only bring that up because I mean I'm drinking Jack well, and Coke here, so I'm feeling good. There you go. Well, the only like, well, the only the only areas I think where uh, Cersei and Trump diverge is that. Uh, Cersei's actually, actually effective at all her scheming. So if she's petty oh, yeah, and vindictive, no. you end up dead <laughs> with her. If you're petty and vindictive with Trump, he just tweets nasty. And he says, sad. <laughs> okay, so that's that's pretty much all I have to say about Game of Thrones at this point. I really, that's all I got to say. Um, it The season fucking blew me away, and I'm pissed off that I have to wait an entire year for the <laughs> final season. Um, and the fact that it will be the final season... It, it cuts me deep. Are they cutting it off at the eighth? Yeah, that's it. Oh damn! They're, they're going to go out on their own terms. It's not going to be one of these things where the show doesn't. You get, it, it's not going to get canceled before they finish the arc. It's they're they're ending they're on their going terms. out on their own. Right, and so it is bittersweet that season eight is going to be the last one. And aren't the books being written after the series comes no, out the, at this the books, point? The books in the series have totally diverged at a certain point. Yeah, no, I know that. I just remember I know like at some point I heard that the show, like the season for the show, is coming out before the book. I think so, or something like that. So it's there. like the books behind the show, or something. yeah. But I don't, I don't think uh, George R. R. Martin's books are going to end the way the show ends. I think they're going to. Oh, oh, absolutely. Ways. Oh, probably. But not. I think they did say that the the ending of the show, the overall ending, will be bittersweet. So we'll see what that. Eh, better yeah. bittersweet than yeah. just plain I mean, fuck. There are there are an incredible amount of fucking theories on how it's going to end too. So I don't. Yeah, that's a, it. that's a deep rabbit there's, hole. There's always plenty of theories. I mean, that's right. So next so, next segment here. Uh, it's going to be games coming out for the month. Now, this is where oh, my expertise goes and rolls back because I don't know a thing about <laughs> gaming or what is uh, hip in gaming. I have no idea. So this is going to be a learning oh, yeah. experience for me. So what's coming out this month, Brad? Well, and this is where I get to shine. There you go. I think I'll probably start out with probably the most prominent and also the one coming out the most recent. Mm -hmm. The fifth of this month okay. is a game that's been looked after for a long time, Destiny 2. Okay. Now, in the first Destiny, there's this whole storyline, and, it, and it is, it, it's an online game. Right. It's, you don't, there's no single player storyline like most games. It's, it's strictly online. Okay. Now, just like any other online game, you make your own character. Okay. You select a class, you equip weapons, you fight. And the storyline for Destiny is mankind was living just fine as it was, like we see today. Mm -hmm. Then something came from the stars called, I believe it's the Seeker, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've played. Um, the Seeker? The well, Seeker. you got to call yourself a potter for that one. <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Cross basically... Streams. And, and it's bad because this is a giant orb. <laughs> as, as, as bad as that parallel is. Please tell me someone had the presence of mind to draw some wings on it. <laughs> Nobody does fly. Oh, fuck. There you go. Well, close enough. <laughs> but it's literally about... I want to say from, the, from what you see in the game, it's probably around a, maybe a third the size of the Earth. Maybe smaller. Okay. But, I mean, you can definitely see it from... Death orbit. Star. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, it comes in and it just hovers above Earth, and it gives all this technology and 
stuff to men. It basically raises us to the stars. Okay, so it confirms the uh, History Channel aliens guy? Yes. It, it yes. validates him? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the meme and everything. <laughs> um, so basically what this thing is, I mean, they build robots, they go to the stars, everything. Okay. But then they find out that the Seeker is like this beacon of light. Okay. Is how they refer to it. And darkness is following it. Okay. And darkness is literally alien hordes. Okay. So they come to Earth and they wreck our shit. Okay. Well, so before the Seeker is killed, well, before it's put into a coma, I uh -huh. guess you could say, before it's blown to shit and has a chunk missing out of it, blah, okay. blah, blah, it releases these little particles of itself. Okay. These things are called ghosts. And these ghost mission is to fly around and find individuals with high levels of light, which okay. is like the energy you use. Okay. And if they're dead, they can resurrect you. Oh, that's it's it's literally any anything like, like that's part of the story. That's how your character comes to be. You died, okay, and this, a ghost like this ghost finds you and brings you back. That's fucking neat. It is, and so when the storyline, like the very opening scene, the opening cutscene is the ghost finding you, bringing you back to life, and explaining shit to you. Okay, but literally you've got he's got alien like hunters on his ass trying to hunt him down to kill him and when okay. he brings you back to life they're now trying to kill you okay and so you have to fight your way through it and fight your way to the last stronghold on earth okay where like the accumulation of these things called guardians who are all these individuals found by ghosts the guardians are the ones who are congregating and fighting against the darkness okay and the whole game is you basically taking back earth uh the moon mars venus you just fight your way through those three planets. Okay. They've had expansion packs that give you more missions for different areas, shit like that. Okay, so all, so it's following a storyline. Yes. Yeah, but it's, oh, yeah. It's, but it's not single player. Exactly. Okay, so you don't have a single player campaign mode. So no. all of these storylines are being played out over an online multiplayer platform? Yeah. It's, it's pretty fucking neat. Oh, yeah. Well, the genres that you could, and speaking in nerd talk, it would be a first person shooter okay. MMORPG. So it's okay. first person shooter, multi, uh, massive multiplayer online. Okay, I was just going to ask game. you what MMO was. Yeah, okay, mo so massive multiplayer online. Okay, massive multiplayer online. online role playing game. Yes. Okay, I got you. And so now with Destiny 2 coming out, the storyline is actually continued from more or less where the first one left off. I okay. mean, MMOs really don't have a set plot line. You're not going to have like sequels or anything it's more or less just a continuation for whatever happened okay and i honestly i they haven't come out with it so i don't know if you can continue like your old character storyline or not but with this new one there's a new warlord for the aliens who's risen up okay so you got a new big bad yes okay new big bad and he basically brings his armada to the last city, the the safe haven where where the guardians have set up had okay. set up their base. He comes in with an armada to Earth and wrecks their shit. Okay. So now, and I'm only speculating on this one because again, it comes out on the fifth. I've already pre-ordered this shit. Right. So you're, you're in it. I'm I'm waiting. Okay. I've so got. You're all I'm, in. You got your chips all in. Exactly. Okay. And so. Well, the speculation I've got on it is more or less. It looks like most of the fighting is going to take place on in that city. Okay. But the city at this point's in ruins. Okay. So, so they, I they've think already it, fucked it up. They've already fucked it up. Okay. At this point, you're just trying to fight back and take it back. Okay, I got you. So, you know, they start out by wrecking your shit, so that mm -hmm. way you have now there's some stakes to it. Right? Exactly. So, like, what drew you to that game originally? Was it like the visuals, or was it the storyline? Well, I mean, when I first it, it drew me in was the visuals. Okay. Because it is it is a very visual based game. There there are like their loading screens is your starship going from planet to planet. Oh wow! Like you, it's literally like a light speed screen. Oh cool. I mean, so I mean, it's it was definitely a visual. It's definitely visual driven. Okay. But I mean, you get like three races. You can be human. You can be a humanoid robot. Oh okay. Or you can be an alien. Which yeah. one do most people do? What do they do? It's actually pretty balanced. Is it? Yes, because I mean, there's only like three. There's only three classes you can really pick. There's the what is it? It's it's like your basic warrior class. You're okay. the one who you're a soldier. 
Okay. You okay, basically so you carry a rifle, you pick a, you have shields, stuff right. like so that. Right. So the only the only the only reference I have to this is this like Call of Duty because I played that for a minute. So. Okay. Okay, so I, I kind of get what you're saying you're choosing yeah. classes. Okay. Yeah. Well, but I mean even then, I mean any class can use any weapon. Okay, so you for... you can still like set what your preferences are. Yes. Okay. Except for Except for hunters, mm-hmm. they get a special weapon. They get the sniper rifle. Oh, cool! They're they're the snipers of the group. Oh, okay. So the people that I hated the most. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, they're they're the ones who immediately after you spawned, you got headshotted. Goddamn. Okay. <laughs> okay. But you got the soldiers who carry the basic rifles, but they're mostly built for health and attack. Okay. So I mean, they're the ones who will carry shields. They're the ones who will lead the charge. Okay. So then they're you, they're the uh, they're the phalanx yes. of the operation. Got then it. you've got your hunters who, like I said, you have sniper rifles. Um, I think another class you have with them is blades. Okay. You get throwing knives with them. Okay. I mean, but they're mostly range combat. They're right. very easy to kill up close, but at a distance, pains in the ass. Okay. Then you get the warlocks, who get a higher power level, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. With them, I mean, they can throw orbs across the battlefield and d- just obliterate your ass. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds like a big penis in the anus. They, dude. they are. Penis. Does it make you yell? Like, do you curse and scream <laughs> shit? I I try not to rage quit or rage in general. Uh-huh. I'm I'm typically level headed with this stuff. Oh, okay. The anger you get, I find the angrier the the worse you are. Okay. The more mistakes you'll make. No, I, I can I can attest to that because yeah. I remember when um when you, I you when played I, Call of Duty. I you did know. I did for a while for for a while there and then I full disclosure when I was playing Call of Duty on the regular I was uh. I was. I had some uh, some intermittent gaps of employment, shall we say? Oh, yeah, nice. and and a supply of Adderall. Oh, yes. So y- you can imagine what that what that ended up being. Many all night sessions. Um, oh. Now here's here's where I'm going to embarrass myself, man. Uh, here's how cheesy I am. When I would play, mm-hmm. I would put in my uh, headphones. No, or no, not my headphones. I put the. I play it through the system through the mm-hmm. Xbox. The soundtracks to every Terminator movie. It got me in the mood to kill, man. It got me in the mood to kill. I felt like I was fucking indestructible, even though there were a bunch of twelve-year-olds whooping my ass. <laughs> and ultimately, that's what like had me stop when I uh, yeah. It's, but when I mean, ran out of the Adderall, <laughs> <laughs> I found myself. My reflexes were slower, mm-hmm. right? And I would just I would go in these games and I get trounced like every mm-hmm. fucking time. And I would rage quit because I'm like I'm fucking twenty four. I don't fucking need this shit. You know, because like I would hear it in my ear and then like, ha ha, the little squeakers suck a dick. <laughs> like you the fucking pussy over there. <laughs> uh, fuck, man, it pissed me off so bad. And I honestly, honestly, since then, since I ran out of the Adderall, I really haven't played any games. <laughs> and like, funny. and like, I see like uh, like the Battlefront games, you know, Star Wars the Battlefront coming out, and I'm like, that looks fucking mm. cool. And every once in a while, man, I do get, I get to the point where it's like I. I Debate dropping money on a gaming system again just for Battlefront. Like I'd have, I'd have no interest to play any other game, but like Battlefront, just because I could fly an X-wing. Do what you got some feelings about Battlefront? Because that's coming out this month as well. The second one is coming out this month. Yeah, the first. Okay, so you have initial an issue with the first Battlefront. The set. first one, okay. yes, because Battlefront, the both Battlefronts originally came out for PlayStation Two. Right, I, I vaguely remember that. The first one. Was was it was a good setup for a good game? Okay, because I mean, you had your basic campaign where it was basically okay. You play through the battles of the Star Wars movies, right? But I mean, you don't other outside of that for story mode. You don't do much that you don't do much else. Right. It's literally they just they they give you scenarios from the movies. There's right. not like a story driven plot. There's nothing like that. Then was the first yeah they had Galactic Conquest I believe in the first one. Okay. I believe. Okay. Don't quote me on that one. Okay. I, I, um, you know more than I do. Yeah, but I think they. But Galactic Conquest was a game mode they had for both for the games where literally you picked what army you wanted to play. Right. They gave you a starship. You flew around the galaxy conquering planets. I believe. Now that I'm thinking about it, I believe it was only for the second one. Okay. So for the first one, I believe all they had was instant action, where you set up a scenario, you picked your battleground, you picked your army, and you went at it and you right. beat the game. Overall, a good setup for the franchise. Right. But for people who, for gamers who look more after storyline, who really like to be into the games, not really what they would have wanted or expected. Right. The second game came out, and it was fucking awesome. 
like they, what they what they did wrong with the first game where they didn't give you a plot, they didn't do any of that, they made more than made up for in the second game. Yeah, they corrected that. Because they gave you a story-driven campaign where you're the 501st Clone Legion. Uh-huh. You, are was... An- you are Anakin's personal clone army. Okay. You fight on Geonosis. They. They the sol- they give you soldier every in between each mission, they mm-hmm. give you soldier background on every engagement. Oh wow. Like they even to the point where they, they give you side missions where you didn't know the five oh first was there. Mm-hmm. Where um Anakin loaned his army to Jedi Master Ayla Sakura okay. on gotcha. Felucia. Okay. The planet where you yeah, see that her was in walking the Clone Wars, wasn't it? Yeah, was Wars, where you yeah. see her, in, like, in, it's the planet with all the giant oh, mushrooms. Oh, at the end, and during the Order 66 montage. In yeah, okay. where you see her oh, gun down. Oh, God, that, that, just the music behind that scene, if I think about it, I man, know. It fucking, it gets me right in the feels. I know. It's like, uh, you know, Mork from, uh, Robin Williams is Mork. Look yes. out, the emotions are coming! <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, so, I, I imagine... They're doing much the same thing right now because when when Battlefront came out again, it was just an online mode, right? It was just a free for all. Yes, it was all it was all multiplayer. That's kind of why right. it's sore feelings for me because I right. mean they should have learned their lesson when they came out with Battlefront Two for the PlayStation okay. Two. Okay. Okay. Where I mean you have this amazing game, and I mean there were story modes. Right. There were um, modes in Battlefront Two where you could literally do a all Sith team versus an all Jedi team. And you guys right. could fight it out on Tatooine. Okay. There was another game mode where it was the Rebels or the Empire. So they spanned the, the two trilogies. They they spanned the two trilogies. Okay. And in, there was a game mode where you could play on Hoth. Okay. And you could either select to be the Rebels or the Empire. Right. And the other team that opposed you was the snow monsters that attacked Luke. The Wampas? The Wampas. You had to fight fucking Wampas? You you Not could bad. play as the Wampas. You could fucking be a Wampa? You could be a Wampa. I'd want to be a Wampa. It was um. it was something <laughs> like they put so much work into the second battlegrounds. Yeah. And I but, you know, I think they're I think they are doing that again though with Battlefront 2. It's gonna follow a story mode. It has a single player story mode. And it's a cool story. It is it's a cool story. You know, the uh, the idea of uh of a special operations unit operating within the empire. And then I I might be wrong, but they eventually fold themselves into the first order. And that's how they kind of bridge those gaps. They even put out a book uh, called Inferno Squadron, which is a prelude to, to Battlefront two. I think they're learning their lesson. And plus I've I've been watching some of the beta stuff Mm -hmm. online and you know, the maps they have, like I was just watching, of course, when, when it, when they dropped it, it came out with the, uh, the Theed. Yeah. So you're fighting, you know, droids and, and clones. Uh, but the you know, fucking Darth Maul looked badass in that. I thing, know. Dude. And well, then, and then, you know, and it, graphics and visuals are not their problem, right? No, no, I mean, like, they're fucking stunning with, to watch. With most, with most console games, graphics have never been a problem, right? And like, and I'll, I, I will watch people play Battlefront. I will oh, watch it because it's just beautiful to look at. Um, so, and I just recently saw. I think it was that is a YouTuber, Dash Star. Okay. Yeah, I think he's yeah. He had a, a video of him playing another map in Battlefront Two. I think it was one of the betas, but it was a. Uh, it was he was playing as the Millennium Falcon, you know. He was in yeah. a, in a space battle. It, it looked like oh, yeah. it looked like Scarif from Rogue One. Okay. Um, they had like a, a shield generator around a planet and shit. It was really okay. fucking cool to look at. Oh yeah. You know, so I think I think they are they are doing that because I know that was a big thing when Battlefront came out. People were yeah. you know sore about not getting a single player, and it'd be cool to put a single player story within that period of time. Absolutely. Um, but you know, and, and I know some people were also kind of chapped about there was nothing from the prequels. There was no Clone Wars stuff. Um. You know, but it looks like they rectified that, man. And yeah. that's that's kind of what's got me looking at it. Like, maybe I would spend the money on this. Maybe I would actually do that. Well, and, and see, that's the thing. I mean, and that's and that's honestly why I'm kind of chapped about the first game. Because oh. I, I own the first game. I play the first game. I got the deluxe version of the first game, so I had a bunch of extra content. I got... And only to find out that they made the same mistake with the remake of the first one that they did with the original right. first one. And it, it bummed me out. And mm-hmm. kind of made it to where like I don't, I'm not excited for about the. Are you going to give it a shot though? I might. Okay. I mean, when it when it comes out, I mean, I might not buy it at first, but I mean, maybe when the price goes down. Oh, dude, you like, can like uh, couldn't you like just rent it from like a Redbox? I could, but yeah. I mean, I would do that, man. Like rent it out, try it, feel it out. At mm-hmm. most, you'll spend you know six dollars, right? You know. Mm-hmm. Just feel it out. See well, works. for a game like that, I mean, if it does come with the storyline, I'm going to want to play the storyline. And honestly, right. the longer the storyline takes, the longer I'll own it. It's going to take so, a I mean, while, I think. I mean, because they got to span all the way from Endor to the First Order. You're, you're talking to a man who, I believe, what was my... 
I, I, I quick play games. Uh-huh. I, I, I don't fuck so you're around. Like, you're like Johnny Five speed reading, but with a game? Pretty much. Fucking A. <laughs> I'm glad you caught that, too. I'm, I'm glad you caught that, too. And I'm about to say, I'll, I'll give you my quickest time for one of the greatest dungeon runners of all time okay. later. Okay. Okay. Um, but okay. I got you. Yeah. But, um, I mean, and that's... Am I am I psyched for Battlefront Two? Yeah, sure. Just I mean, maybe see if they've rectified the mistakes that they've made right. again. Unfortunately, right. that's the only reason I'm kind of like I got right. bummed out with the first one. Well, I think that it's still early in Battlefront Two. Like yeah. it's still early. It, it, oh, it is, it is. Still They're going to be dropping all kinds of shit pretty soon. And you know what? No matter what you see on YouTube, no matter what you see coming out, nothing will ever really match up for the first game. Okay. For or for when the game the first, first releases. Okay. Because honestly, there if you look it up on YouTube, there's a demo they released of Halo 2 okay. for original Xbox. Mm-hmm. The level is literally nothing at all like what they did for the original game. Like, the level's not even... Like, well, okay. The level is in the game, mm-hmm. like the environment. Right. But literally, the mission you see run is absolutely never in the game. Oh, okay. None of the games. Oh. Shit. So is that all that's coming out this month? Um, no, actually, there is. There's another one coming out. Okay. It's a bit of a little. It's it's time honored. I mean, it's it's something you have to pay attention for. Okay. And they're not really advertising it as heavily. Okay. It is coming out the fifteenth of the month. And it's a dishonored game. It's called Dishonored: Death of the Outsider. Okay. Well, so what's that storyline about? The storyline is you are the. Okay, the only way I can get I can really explain it is the Industrial Revolution has just happened for England. Okay. I, 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 it's England-esque. England, so France, kind of one of those European... Area. Yeah, in that area. During the Industrial Revolution. Pretty much. Okay. Like, it's it's the start of... I, I want to kind of call it a steampunk Industrial Revolution. Okay, okay. It, that, I mean... The, it's, that's it's, what the vibe they're going after? It's, it's kind of vibe. Okay. You are the personal bodyguard to a queen. Okay. Not only that, but... They kind of hint at the fact that you and the queen are something more. Ah, you're fucking the queen. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't you know? I always say, don't dip your pen in company ink, man. That just never ends well. But um, the whole the whole thing is like they start off the first game with you coming home. Okay. And apparently, the queen sent you out to a different country because the black plague has just started. During the industrial revolution. During the okay. industrial revolution. Okay. Oh, that would fucking suck. Yeah. And so they're trying, like, she sends you out to different countries to look for aid during this time. And right when you get back, you give, like, the response letter of the other country to the queen. Okay. She reads it, and she's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Assassins show up. Ah. And you fight the assassins for a little bit. It's like the tutorial on how to fight. Oh, okay. I, I know what you're saying. They have that in the beginning of some games. Yeah. Okay, I got you. After the tutorial, the queen gets killed. Dude, your piece of ass gets killed? Your piece of ass gets killed. That fucking sucks. Now... Back to the band of the hand, I guess. Yeah. Now, the queen gets killed in front of you and okay. her daughter. It's fucked up, but okay. Yeah. So, after... Once... Wait. Once the, yeah, think about it. Think about it. Are you... Are you saying that he then fucks the daughter? No, what the fuck? I mean, that's what I thought you were setting no, up. No, no. Because I'm like that. Hey, you know, if you if your if your your main chick's dead, the daughter's like ten. Oh fuck me, never mind. Yeah, no. God damn, thanks no. for putting me in that situation, Brad. You could have cut me off early. No, now I just talked about there's, fucking. There's no fun. Uh, in the that. main character of a video game diddling his dead chick's girlfriend <laughs> yeah. or daughter. Thanks. thanks. That's on you. <laughs> that one's on you. Mm. <laughs> Way to go! The first episode. We're, start, we're on the right foot, man. I know. But uh, But continue, continue. And so after the queen gets killed, um, you're like standing there with the daughter and the head of the church and the like, I guess, what would you call him? Like the head of the spies. Like he's the guy who controls like all the espionage for the country. Yeah, like you'd call like the the minister of intelligence or something. Yeah, pretty much. I got you. Those two show up with more guards. Okay. And they blame you for the queen. And they end up throwing you in prison, okay. where you're tortured and interrogated. Okay. So then they do, they cut up, like the cutscene goes blank, and then they come back to you in the prison getting tortured. Oh, okay. And it's those two Kinda guys. Hot. Yeah. Those two guys in front of you, and then they dismiss the inter- like the interrogator who's burning you with a piece of like heated up metal from a fire. Is it wrong that turned me on? No. Okay. No. Just want to make sure. Pants got a little tighter than I thought no. I should ask. Oh, don't worry. It happens to everyone. <laughs> 
Um, and so they dismiss him, and then they talk to they talk shit to you. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, they're the ones who were behind her death. Like, they, oh, they were behind her assassination. So they're taunting you at that they're point. They're taunting you at that oh, okay, point. Okay, I got you. And they're like, you're going to rot in here. No one's ever going to know what the fuck happened. So then they leave. Okay. And then at that point, they quit fucking around, and they actually give you, like, they put you into the game where you get out of your cell, you're going through the prison. And once you're out of the prison, the game then becomes, like, the rest of the game then becomes you're helping the rebellion... And they release you into like these sectors of the city okay. to complete these missions. Oh, okay. And so you that's have that's how the story moves forward. And you have two choices. You can either take the stealthy route where it's like you kill as little people as possible. Um, you just try your best to not like go on a bloody rampage. Right. That one is like kind of like your good storyline, your good ending. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you can just go around and you can kill everybody. Okay, so have you played this game yet, or like, or have you just been? Oh yeah, no. Oh, so you played the one that's coming out? No, but I've played. Oh, so you're talking about like stuff that? Okay, I got you. Yeah, I got you. So I mean, and that's one of the driving forces behind this game is the fact that it's like, oh, okay, you your actions during this game influence everything in the game, right? Like, uh, if you the more people you kill, the more enemies will show up later because they'll up security, blah blah blah. Okay, people who play the game will understand. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, you just have those two choices. You play through the game. Not going to spoil anything about it. Okay. Second game comes around and the second game has actually come around rather, I don't want to call it recent, but I mean, in this year. Okay. The second game is now the daughter's all grown up. Okay. And I guess I would say the one, the second game I have not gotten too far in. I haven't played that one that much. Okay. I, I have it, but I haven't played it. Okay. But the second game comes out, and you can be either the daughter, the queen, the princess, or you can be the main character from the last game. Okay. The main character from the last game, I think his whole power set is like stealth and everything, where he has a blade and a gun. Okay. The princess uses mostly like magic. Oh, okay. It's the easiest way to explain it. Right. And so, I mean, I'm not too sure on the storyline for that. I guess some woman comes up and tries to take the throne and succeeds for a little bit. Okay. And your whole mission is to get the throne back. Okay, so that's the arc of the second game. Yeah. And, okay. and then the second game, you can actually choose whether or not to play as the main character from the first one or as the princess. Okay, so you have options there. You can oh, play yeah. different arcs. Yeah. And I, I suppose the third game is going to be something similar to that. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I'd act, I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot from it. I just, I know it's coming out this month and I've seen a couple of like kind of still images from it. Okay. I mean, Death of the Outsider, the whole point of the Outsider in all, in the first two games, the Outsider is the God who gives you your powers. Okay. Like he seeks you out to right the wrongs that have been done. Okay. Kinda. So I'm going to assume from Death of the Outsider that, uh, that little. Yeah. Okay. That's called. That's, that was kind of like a spoiler there in the title. Okay. What's next? Oh, let's see. Um, I know they're releasing another Fallout 4 Game okay. of the Year edition because okay. that game was fucking awesome. Okay, so they're re-releasing it and trying they're... to make some extra bones on it. Pretty much. Okay. Cool. Like probably some extra content, maybe a few extra missions. Right. I mean, but other than that, that's about what's coming out for okay. this month. Okay. Uh, so before we get into the next segment, I want to take a break here and I want to uh, thank... Um, Thank a, 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 a business and a group of guys that if, if it were not for them, we would not be sitting here doing this show tonight. So uh, I need to shout out my friends John and Robert over at the Nucleus Labs recording studio. Um, I have wanted to do a podcast for about two years now. I've been wanting to get something done, and I decided to go ahead and just pull the trigger on this. I had the right, the right friend to do it with, the right content to do, and... So originally I thought I was going to buy microphones and I was going to get a laptop and all this stuff and and learn it myself. But uh, to be honest, I'm rather stupid. Um, And I probably just don't have, I I, I don't have the desire to sit down and learn how to edit and to record and to do the microphones. So I got in contact with my buddies. I'd worked with them before my band did a record at their studio. Um, that is actually the Hippie Kill Team. The record's name is Apophis. It's on Bandcamp, so if you want to listen to that, go Sh- for it. Shameless plug. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no shame in this game, bud. So I've, I'd worked with them before. I've known them for years. They are very good friends of mine. And so I, when I went to uh, – I told John uh, in passing that I wanted to do a podcast, and I guess that planted the seed, and he asked me, you know, and I – he asked me if, if he could get involved, and I said, absolutely, you have the equipment, I have, you have the expertise, I have neither of those, 
So it made sense. <laughs> so if you are in the San Antonio area and you're a musician or you're in a band or you want to do a podcast even, if, you, if you've got something you want to talk about, contact these guys, the Nucleus Labs Recording Studios. They're going to be getting on social media very soon. Uh, they will have ways to contact you. And if you want to you know, do a demo, an EP, if you want to make a record, if you want to just do anything that requires the talent and expertise of people that have been doing this for a good long while, get a hold of them, the Nucleus Labs Recording Studios in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, so next, Brad and I are going to do a little segment called Throwbacks! 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 Oh. Yes. So, Brad's going to do the first throwback. This is going to include games and films and stuff, so this is probably going to be a good chunk of time wasted on this here. Oh, yeah. No. So, Brad, what is your throwback game? Well, since since we've already kind of touched a little bit on Star Wars. Okay. I was, I mean, there's there's so many. Okay. Star Wars games have been around for a long, long time. Yes, yes, they have. Dating all the way back to, I believe, the original NES. Really? Oh, what yeah. wasn't the original NES? The original NES. I, I never believe... had an NES. We had like we had an old Nintendo. We didn't have the Super Nintendo. Oh, see, Nintendo. you're you're talking so... to a. I'm I'm the child of people who grew up in the fifties. Oh wow. I've I've played original NES. I played Super Nintendo. I've played okay. Nintendo sixty four. Nintendo sixty four was my go to oh, console yeah. growing up. So what was what's what was that? What was the game for NES and Star Wars? Because I have no idea what that was. I believe I think if I remember correctly, it was just like uh, Star Wars. It was like the original, like from the original trilogy. They, right. They did like um, a New Hope or like uh, Empire like, Strikes like Back the, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. There, there is, there is a su- an NES game actually, where literally you play Luke, and all you are equipped with is a blaster, like original. Okay. I'm going into Tashi Station to pick okay, up some farm power boy, converters. Farm boy, Luke. farm boy Luke. All right. With nothing but a blaster, and your whole like is to go get your power converters. Level. That's that's the whole first level. Getting your the power whole converters. first level is you right. running across Tatooine, blasting Minox. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and like the on the ground, uh, those are the air enemies. But like the ground enemies are like these giant like lizards with giant foreheads that look like they just run at you and attack you. Right. And I can't give them a name. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know if the game gave them a name. And God, your man. your bo- your final boss for the last game is. And I'm and I am quoting the game on this one. This is the actual title for the final boss. Okay. The Sarlacc Pit Monster. So you had to kill a Sarlacc. You had to kill a Sarlacc. It came out of the hole. Oh really? It it was a giant worm that came out of the hole and had tentacles. Oh, fucking a. Um, God, I think what was the first? I'm trying to think of the first Star Wars game that I remember playing. <sighs> it had to have been in I think '96. So that had to have been Shadows of the Empire. Mm-hmm. That had to be the first one. Because oh. I'm trying to remember. 64. Tr- yeah, yes. Yes. Because I never remember playing one up until oh. 64. They had uh, Shadows of the Empire 96, and that was right when Nintendo 64 came out, right? It was 96? Yes. Okay. So I, I, was, I was there. I'm a little fuzzy on the years sometimes, though. Um, so it was, it was Shadows of the Empire, and then Rogue Squadron was one of them. What yes. It? Yeah, you had Rogue Squadron on 64. It was like a Rogue Squadron flight. No, yeah. I think it was just Rogue Squadron. Yeah, you were just you flying around in an X-Wing and blowing shit up. Well, you got more than X-Wing, actually. Oh, they did the speeders, too, didn't they? Oh, they did a lot more than that. They got they had X-Wings, right. the speeders, and I remember if you got to a certain point in the game, mm-hmm. they unlo- you unlocked the Naboo Starfighter. Oh, yeah, because that was right around the time Phantom mm-hmm. Menace came out. Um, fucking new. Whenever I think about old wow, Star Phantom Wars games. Phantom Menace came out. 99, oh, bro. Wow. 99. Um, I'm 24 and I feel old. I'm 29, dude. Shut the fuck up. That's not that bad. I'm, I'm almost in my dirty 30s, Brad. Dirty 30s. The dirty 30s, man. There ain't no going back. Um, the the it, when I think about Star Wars games, it's a PC game. It was a game I played on the PC. Um, Dark Forces Two Jedi Knight. Mm. Not Dark Forces One. Yeah, but no, Dark Forces Two. Back when you're when... you're playing Kyle Katarn and it's all yeah. first person, right? You can do first person. Yeah. So you can got first person. I, what I love is the first person lightsaber. <laughs> like it, that was just it was just a little beam across the screen. It, it looked like went, it looked like you were holding a nightstick at a right. raid. <laughs> but I mean, of course, Dark Forces Two Jedi Knight. That fucking game had the best fucking storyline ever. Uh, Jedi Outcast. No, 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 no. Well, before that, so it was Jarek. Yes, it was the Dark Jedi. And they had the they had the, the they had the cinematic 
uh, cut re- scenes. I remember they did the cinematic cut scenes like right. it was a real movie. Right, but it was all and grainy Jared, and shit. Jared looked so fucked. Yeah, Jared, I, I, but I fucking love those cut scenes because they were so cool, even though they, they were, were grainy and shitty looking. Well, for the time, that was actually a really big thing. It was because it was like, what, 97? Something like that. Yeah, it was, it was, that was, you know. But the one thing I remember most about that fucking game is A, the storyline was cool because you could go either mm-hmm. dark side, light side, right? And I love that at the end of the game, you had that yellow lightsaber. I yeah. love that. And I, I'm, I'm waiting. I am still fucking waiting to see more yellow lightsabers in canon. That's and, what I'm waiting for. Well, and see, that's the thing. They might be doing that more because, um, I mean, that's that's typically like kind of, that's become kind of like in Legends. Because yeah. you know I'm a huge Legends fan. Yes, I do. I, I follow mostly Legends. Yes, I, I do. I could give a shit about canon. Uh-huh. I mean, I watched the seven movies that have come out, but I could give a shit about canon. Uh-huh. I love Legends. So this is where we're going to teach each other. I know. I love, I love Legends too. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. When I was a kid, that was all we had was Star Wars. But that was all we had until... Until uh, the special editions came out and all yeah. that, all we had was the books we could find in our library, like you know, uh, the Thrawn trilogy, Dark yeah. Forces, all all that stuff. So believe me, I'm I'm with you. I oh, love yeah. the legends yeah. as far as the stories, but what I love most about the new canon is the fact that they get to tell new stories. Anyway, anyway, so back to the yellow lightsabers. I know they brought them in on the Clone Wars. The, the Temple Guards had the, yes. had the yellow lightsabers, and that was great. I loved that. And I, they have yet to explain uh, why they were yellow, because in canon they have explained how lightsabers get their colors in the new canon. Are you familiar with it? Yes. Okay, so yeah, the, the, the crystals bleed. Yeah. Um, so they have yet to explain exactly how they had a yellow hue, as far as I know. If, if anyone knows how they did that, please correct me. Well, and what it is is um, they that's kind of become like the default color for... People who can use a lightsaber, uh-huh. but who aren't affiliated with either side of the force. Right. It was somewhere right in the middle. It's exactly. It's it's the fabled gray Jedi. Oh god. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but that, you know, the, back to that game. What I remember most affectionately about that game is we, myself, and my friend had friends that lived down the street from me. Um, they were four sisters that were just incredibly into Star Wars, and those were the only people that I that I hung out with for a good long time, and. We used to go online to a website called, like, I think it was, like, Zone? Yeah. Zone. Was that what it was called? Yeah. The Zone? Was it that? Okay, so we mm-hmm. would go on there, and we would play uh, Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight mm-hmm. online. It had a multiplayer Like, kind of arena fight. Yeah. Exactly. And you could you could customize your own character. Yep. You could choose the lightsaber and all that. And I always went with a yellow lightsaber. Always. <laughs> and because I fucking loved that thing that much. It was just a cool color. Even though, like, my favorite color is green, I love the yellow lightsabers. And we would, I would kill hours on that. And that was like during the days of dial-up. So if someone rang, oh god, yeah, if someone rang, you I got kicked fucked. out. I was pissed. Yeah. I was pissed. Like, god, the fucking time, man. Ah! <laughs> but oh man, that fucking game is awesome. And playing it online like that, it, it reminded me of like everyone loves multiplayer now. It's this big oh, yeah. thing. But there are entire games in multiplayer. Oh yeah. But it's now that, and that's where it came from. Was like those online mm-hmm. PC gaming rooms. That, oh, it that, was so fun. That would give you that little extra thing where you could interact with people right. your age and not go outside. There you go. <laughs> and kind of, it's kind of the, well, the that's what it was. I mean, right. that's, that's honestly it was different, what it was. Man. It was different when I was a kid. When we played games, yeah, we played games and we oh, played yeah. for a couple of hours, but I, I, I have a hard time remembering any time when I was a kid playing a game for longer than maybe two hours. Because it was yeah. like, oh, well, we're good with this. Maybe it was like the graphics or the, the storyline was not there. Or it was just a different kind of, it was, you know, the 2D days, man. Yeah. You watch just two-dimensional screens. Oh, yeah. Um, so maybe that had something to do with it. But like I said, I don't well, I don't remember was... I don't remember doing any like all-night gaming things until I had, A, found Adderall and Call yeah. of Duty. At that point, yeah, I'd be up all see, night. See, growing up, I didn't need Adderall or Call of Duty. You had the natural predisposition? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just different when, when it just feels different. It feels yeah. different. Oh, it, oh it'll definitely feel different because, yeah. and see, with me, you you have a you have that special feeling for the first game. Right. For me, I came a little bit later, and I know you're gonna roll your eyes at that one. But... I won't roll my eyes. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> but I I did come in a little later. Right. Where the game that it's the same character. Yeah, it's Kyle Katarn. Kyle Katarn, badass. Yeah. I actually came in and the first. Like PC Star Wars game, just Star Wars game. Mm-hmm. I was playing PC long before this. Right. I I grew up watching my dad take apart a computer, putting it back together, playing a game, stuff like that. The first like PC Star Wars game that I ever played 
was Star Wars the Four or the Force Unleashed, Star Wars Jedi Outcast. Yeah, that was the sequel. That was to the sequel Jedi to Knight. it, where instead of Katarn, it was a giant lizard called Dasan. Yeah, Dasan instead of Jarek. Instead yes. of Jer- yeah, that was Jarek. And... By the way, that was not Katarn. Kyle Katarn's a good guy. Jarek's a bad yeah, guy. Yeah, no. Okay, so um, but and it was the continuation of that storyline. Right. And at this point, Katarn has like given up using the Force because yep. he's just tired of the shit. Right. And of course, it's still Luke che- teaching at the old Jedi Academy, yeah, the old at, Axiom on Yavin. At 4. Yavin, yeah, man, so, yeah, man, that I was mean, that was cool in that game that they threw Luke in there. They they did the three D on everything. They yeah, updated their character models. Right, still a little janky, but I mean that's considered. But too, it was like what? It was like what? Two thousand, two thousand something. Two thousand one, two thousand two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. But I mean, it's, for the time, it was amazing. Right, right, and. You know, that was really the game that captured my attention and imagination. I loved it. And Star Wars specifically or just in general? In general. Okay, so overall that was that was the, where the seed was planted. Yes. Okay. And but not only that, especially for online gaming. Right. Cuz they did the same thing. It you didn't need a special room, like mm-hmm. you didn't need to go to a special website to play it right. online. They actually had a multiplayer option. Right. And you could play against other people online yeah, or connect. and this is actually one of the first games that actually did it. You could play online or multiplayer, sorry, by yourself, right? And have all the other characters be bots that were run by that. The, that were run by the computer UI. Yeah, I remember that, and I do remember that. I don't, and I might be wrong. I might be remembering this completely wrong, but I don't think we needed to go on that Zone website for Jedi Knight Two. No, not at all. Yeah, it, it was straight it was off its, the game. Yeah, it was on its own network and its own thing. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, for like single player, you saw like every all the symbols and everything, and all the words were blue. Right, right. When right, you right. went to multiplayer, it was all red. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, that was. I remember that game, man. That was a really cool game, and there was a good storyline too. It was a really oh yeah, good storyline. Um, which I think okay. those that's that's what those games really did best, man. They kept yeah. spinning a yarn and. And they you know. drew you back into the original series continuation. Right, right. And I, and like I do you meet like... Up with, you meet up with Lando and you have to fight in I Bespin. I can remember that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and, I, and I, I like how the Legends continuity established that kind of version of Luke. Oh, absolutely. Specifically. You know, kind of like he's... the Luke after the sixth movie where he's right. actually relevant. And right, kind of a right. But, but that, that's that's the cool thing. That exists in Legends, yeah. right? But now what they're doing with the movies, we don't even know yet. Now, don't worry. We're going to be getting into that in November. We're going to talk about that shit in November. We're going to do an entire block of speculating yes. about The Last Jedi, and yes. then we're going to review the movie in December. So don't worry. We're going to get to that. So going back to throwbacks, because we're in the throwback segment. Yes. My throwback is one of the games that completely changed... Uh, Fuck, I mean, I, I think it affected the entire the entire community of gaming in a very uh, profound way. Now, the, the original and best widely known and the best ever done. Damn straight. Dungeon was, Runner slash Hack and Slash. Yes. We're talking, of course, about Nintendo 64's The Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. That mm. game, it conjures up so many good memories for me. Because when it came out, my, my older brother bought a Nintendo 64. He purchased one. And I think the only game it came with at the time was uh, Super Mario 64 when it first came out. That was the first game that came with it, they, right? They had Mar- one that was Super Mario 64, uh-huh. and if like the later they actually released a gold edition that mm-hmm. came with um, instead of Super Mario 64, it came out with Donkey Kong 64. Okay, okay. So there was I, I, obviously my brother got the first one. So now back in 1996, uh, kids, the golden years. Yeah. We had this thing called Blockbuster, Blockbuster Video, and it was a video rental place. And that's how I would spend my Friday nights. My family and I would go to Blockbuster Video, and we would I would go look at the horror movie section and, you know, <laughs> like just jaw drop over the, the, the covers because that stuff always fascinated me. And my brother would go to the games and... Kind of a when, foreshadowing there. Yeah, right? <laughs> so... The, the games, at the time when, when N64 first came out, you had only a few games. You had Donkey Kong, you had Super Mario, and then you had Legend of Zelda. Mm. So we would rent Legend of Zelda. And, you know, we would take it home, and I would more I would watch my brother play it, because even then I, I had a hard time playing games because I sucked. <sighs> yeah, if we're gonna be if we're going to be clear about it. So I would watch him play, and he'd get so far, we'd have to return the, the game, and we would just turn around and rent it again. Mm-hmm. And we did this over and over again with Legend of Zelda because we didn't buy it for some stupid reason. And Y'all spent enough money renting it. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like renting a house, right? But that was that. that's a very fond memory. And I remember I didn't even beat that game 
until what? no, I did not even beat that game until the early two thousands. Wow. Because I would all the time I would just sit there and watch people play it. Right. I would just sit there and watch. You know, but eventually I got around the got around to the business of actually beating the game. <laughs> I, I I figured out the Water Temple, one of the most legendary. Young or old, Link? Um, the like the actual Water Temple at the middle in the bottom of a uh, Hyrule Lake. You okay, so old, old Link. Link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck I, that level. Fuck that level so fucking hard. It, dude. It's literally legendary, the hardest dungeon to ever figure I out. Fucking hated that level. Yeah, I, mean, Kev- I loved it, but I fucking hated it. Kevin, I figured that thing out when I was ten. You're better man than I, man. <laughs> better man than I, because I, not to uh, not to sound too punny, but I floundered. Oh god, in damn that it. level. Yes, I went there, but I mean that that game was just. It did change gaming, honestly. Oh yeah, it did because no, that it, was, was, it was that first open world kind of experience. You that was the first game that changed lives before, after Mario. I right. mean, you figure you have Mario who, it's a platformer. That's right. that's what they call it. It's it's a platformer. You jump from platform to platform right. to get to certain places. Right. With Legend of Zelda, I mean, that kind of opened up a whole new world of genres. Mm-hmm. I mean, because Ocarina of Time came out before Donkey Kong 64, didn't it? I think so. I believe, I think for a while, I believe it did. the two games you could get. Yeah. Super Mario 64 and Legend of Zelda. If we're wrong, of course. Correct. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. But, yeah. I mean, for a while there, like, that changed gaming like that yeah. that was the first time something came out other than mario that was a big name yeah and yeah. it was from a different it, i mean it came out for nintendo but i mean yeah. at the same time it wasn't actually it wasn't exclusively exclusively made by nintendo like they had a deal right. with nintendo but it was so much more and i remember the original zeldas were just like you walk into this room and you're looking at it from the pretty ceiling, much yeah and it's very blocky like it, like a lot of other games little things like that to yeah. ocarina mm-hmm. of time where it's expansive it's open it's, and you then, can choose to do things or not there were things you could choose to do and not do like the first time i beat the game all i did was was uh oh forest, jesus you for, I, you forest, poor forest, bastard fire and water and then i fucking went off and i kicked Dan- ganondorf in the dick I didn't. Oh, I didn't God, do this. You, the, you the, the time, uh, time temple, or uh, wow, what was the really? One? What was the other one? The the one that was in above uh, the the, fa- the ghost temple. The phantom oh, temple? the phantom temple, or yeah, I don't like remember that. the gem, but I know it was like the phantom temple, right? The and that temple. one, like I never did those until I was a little older. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna try this other stuff, and then I stuck to that too. <laughs> um, so that's that's my whole spiel on the ocarina of time i'm sure we could probably do an entire episode on it but. oh god i could talk about that one for days right. that was that was well, the original game man yeah but we got to get on to the next throwback we're gonna do film throwbacks now oh, yeah this, bradford's got he's, he's, he's uh he's got one he's got one for us man this, it's, it's an interesting one this is this is an old one that i grew up this is a superhero movie that i grew up watching lay it on me man the phantom fuck yes With, yes fuck yes <laughs> billy fucking zane dude yes a man too pretty to be a superhero. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, but then, you know, Did they, they never touched on him ever, ever having any injuries after getting the shit knocked out of him, didn't they? No, I mean, I mean, it was it was literally he got the shit knocked out of him and yeah. he put on the costume and he started running around taming well, like, tigers. Okay, now now to be fair, like back in those days when someone did a superhero movie, yeah, that's, there that's was true. not a whole lot of thought putting into like how does he learn these skills? That's true. You know, like that's you, never you know on. how he learns these skills. He grew up in. What Africa? I think it was like India. Was yeah, like, India. It was like somewhere like around an there. Old Indian. Well, because if it's a tiger, it has to be fucking India. Yeah. So um, that's racist. Hey, fuck <laughs> off, dude. It's true. <laughs> so um, I fucking I, I I used to love that movie. I remember I remember the first thing that drew me to that movie was not even knowing anything about Phantom itself. It was just the the the, the cover. I know. The posters and all that. Of, it was just of him in his costume right, holding the ring. Right. You know, because that was For, the nineties. I, I be- if correct me if I'm wrong listeners but wasn't that the first movie that did a holographic cover to it uh, because if i remember correctly they, they had the holographic cover where he was holding his right. the ring out the and ring. when you turn the the movie cover it changed colors right to like jade gold and silver right i think i remember or that. something like i think that. i remember that yeah you know of course the, the storyline was a little you know as it, as it was back it's then. an early yeah was, i mean he's fighting pirates right let's let's be right. real here and, and, and it was like a, there was a, a distinct goonies vibe to it as well oh you yeah. bastard yeah, i went there um but i mean come on it, that that movie is like a is a pretty good um representation of where superhero movies were at the time oh yeah you know 
Uh, well, I mean, from looking it up, actually, they weren't that. F- they didn't go that far off from the comics. No, no, they and, they really didn't break that far off. No, and you know, for what it was, man, that's just a it's a pretty solid fucking throwback. Oh movie. yeah, God, yeah, solid fucking throwback. I love that movie. Um, my throwback is, like I said, this is probably going to be a segment of me defending things that people hate. <laughs> Um, but meanwhile, I'm naming off all the shit that was just fucking awesome. Right. So, you know, Brad's connecting to the childhood. I'm just kind of, I'm trying to make a case for things that people hate. Um, no, sure. No, no. Right. Well, okay. We, we live in a, we live in a time of opinions, man. Like everyone, everyone's a critic nowadays because social media has given us that platform. And I at least have noticed that this generation is like, is like hyper fucking critical. Oh yeah. Like they no. will tear everything apart. And it's like, for me, they, they grew up with the internet. Right. To where so, they could make a comment about everything. This is true. And one, this is like a representation of it being a good and a bad thing. Yes. Social media kind of brings us all together. It all, it allows for you to experience different viewpoints at the same time. It allows you to experience different viewpoints <laughs> and it brings us too close together sometimes. Yeah. Um, but my throwback is this. Um, Terminator Salvation. Okay. Now, you have to understand, I am a Terminator mega freak. Okay? I have a tattoo on my arm of a Terminator. It's the, the scene from T2 when you see the, the you endoskeleton the... skull coming out of the fire in the opening title. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I've got, that's on me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. that's tattooed on that's me. That's some good artwork, too. Right. So that was what, and because the Terminator was one of the first movies I ever saw, period, um, was the Terminator. It was, uh, my dad had a, copy he had recorded off of i think like hbo Ooh. on vhs it was you know, old back school back, oh yeah the vhsr the vcr man the, the only old. way they could get more old school is if you told me it was on an eight track no no it wasn't on an eight track i'm not that fucking old <laughs> but no but your dad might be and then oh yeah he is he is he all right that. what he does remember from that period of time anyway yeah, yeah um so that was the first movie i ever saw was terminator and then when terminator 2 came out i but i went over the moon for it Terminator Three came out. I was into it. I was into that one too, man. And that's that. Maybe I could have defended Terminator that one. Terminator Three. Which one was Rise that? Rise of the one? Machines. Bro. Rise of the Machines. The, talk one. to the hand. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Now I I will defend that movie specifically because the hey, ending. you know what? If you're gonna do it, you got to do it right. Talk to the hand. Oh come on. <laughs> Easy there, Ralph Garman. Hey, so, no. <laughs> so you know, I even defended that movie because the ending was cool. Oh, the yeah. ending did not take the, the turn you thought yeah. it would. But when Termi- uh, Terminator Salvation, I had no idea they were making this movie. After T3, I thought, that's it. It's done. Yeah. I had no idea they were I, doing I remember when Salvation came out, and I had no idea it was coming out. Here's how I found out. Here's how I fucking find, found out. I was in California on oh. a family vacation, and I went to go see The Dark Knight with my cousin and her husband. And I'm sitting in this movie theater in, I think it was, uh, what was it in California? Uh, the name's right there, but it was in a Southern, general area. It was Southern Cal Irvine. Irvine. We were in oh, Irvine. Yeah. There it is. I know Irvine. We were, we were in Irvine, and we're sitting in the movie theater, and we're all fucking jazzed up to see The Dark Knight. We had we didn't know what we were going to get, but we were jazzed to see it. <laughs> and the previews come out, and I'm like, okay, come on, hurry up. There's a there's a dude that's in a Joker outfit that he's serving food and shit. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go start the movie. And then and then you heard da da da. No, not da, even da. that. Not even that. This is this is how I found out. This is how I was the only motherfucker in that movie theater. <laughs> To, to, to exclaim at this because the preview came up and all you saw was a skull, oh, right? And it yes. panned out and they see more yeah. skulls and you more skulls. And in my head, I'm like, that's fucking Terminator. Yeah. That is fucking Terminator. That's... And sure enough, when they had the, tre- the, the treads go yeah. over the skulls and crack it, I literally, I let out an audible like, ah, <laughs> because I was so fucking excited because they were finally doing another Terminator. And they showed that quick little montage and shit. And of course, yeah. like, dun, 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 came out. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so, Honestly, for like the first ten minutes of the Dark Knight, that amazing fucking uh, opening scene, mm-hmm. all I could think about was Terminator. Terminator. That's all I could think about. And wow. I remember when we got back to their apartment after the movie that night. The first thing I did was I got on the IMDb's and I started looking at. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, Terminator yeah, they, they Salvation! Showed that, they showed me that picture of John Connor standing over the T six hundred. Oh movie. god, yes. That fucking gave me such a hard on. I'm like, That's oh, fucking that Christian was a Bale. fucking amazing. So. You know, of course, I was extremely excited for this movie before it came out. And I remember I saw it in theaters, and I fucking loved every minute of it because it was different. But they, they still had those callbacks. They they actually went ahead and did the direction where, okay, we've right. done this three times. Right. Let's fucking change it. Right. And, like, and it was, it was they, they had those little callbacks, those little oh, yeah. visual callbacks to the, the first two movies. But the fact that they actually did something in the future war, which I had been wanting to see for years up until that point. Yeah. They did that, and then 
you know, they, they, I know people say it was like, oh, it was too dark. It was too dark. No, no, no. They, they went it's pretty severe Terminator with it. It's a Terminator movie. They went severe with it. Yeah. And I, and I, I see all the gaps and the, and the problems that people have with it. I see all that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was something different. And they really painted the picture well. And of course, I would be remiss in talking about this movie if I didn't talk about the third act of that movie where fucking John Connor is, is trying to get, uh, uh, Kyle Reese out of there, out of Skynet, and they open that door, and it's a fucking CGI version of Arnold, Arnold from 1984. Yeah. I was in the movie theater, and I, I fucking glassed up. I was like, fuck! <laughs> it was so cool. That, that, and, was, that was probably one of the best scenes where he comes out shooting a Gatling gun at right, John Connor. Right, I mean, that was so fucking cool. And, and, it, and it, doesn't it also show them capturing him and sending him back in time? No, they just No, that was, in, that was in Genesis. Yeah. In Genesis, right. they give you a, a little shot of them sending the original T-800 that's back right. in 1984. That's right, that's right. And we'll talk about Genesis at another time, I'm sure, because that's another one that people don't really like, <laughs> and I'm going to fucking defend it. Um, basically, if they want to come out, and I know that right now, James Cameron has the rights to Terminator back. Oh, God. He does, and he's what's going to happen is this is what he's going to do. He's going to produce the next film, and he's given the directing job to Tim Miller, the guy behind Deadpool. Yes. Oh, Tim Miller is God, going to do... Yes. Now, if, you, if the reports are to be believed, James Cameron is saying that this will be, this will be it. This will be, this will be the, the final. final Terminator film, which is cool for me as a fan yeah. because I want to see the story come to an end. Yeah. You know, Genesis set up a different kind of story arc, and I doubt this movie is going to follow Genesis. I really do. Yeah. But either way, a conclusion to that story would be... Oh, yeah. Just fucking tits for us. Yeah, see, because for me, I didn't really grow up so much a Terminator fan. I grew up like Aliens and Predators. Right, so you're still in the same... Yeah, still it, the it's same, still the same genre. You're just in the same like, wheelhouse. Like, yeah, but like for me, the first Terminator movie I saw was actually Rise of the Machines. Okay. I, I saw the third one first. Okay. And then like through TV, I saw the f- first and second. Then when Salvation came out, I saw the movie right. on TV again. Okay. Um, Genesis, I actually have not seen. Okay. Well, hey, man, we need to maybe to rectify that because I liked it. I love Genesis. Um, the only thing I know about Genesis is um, I'm old, not obsolete. Yeah, yeah. Or something yeah, along they, those they do lines. A couple, they do a couple riffs on uh, on Arnold being ancient. Well, yeah. I mean, um, have you seen him? He's still got makeup? it, motherfucker. Hey, 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 he still fucking got it. I, I'm not saying he doesn't got it. I, I'm personally a fan of the uh, uh, Expendables movies. Mm-hmm. But uh, for Terminator Genesis, I know he's got he's got quite a few wrinkles, and he's mostly gray. Oh yeah, well, of course, during the first half of the movie, they do a little kind of like that digital touch up that Marvel is also famous yeah. for. They do a little bit of that, and but they make him look his age later on in the movie, and they they do a good job of explaining it, man. They really do. It fits. It makes sense. Um, and dude, for the, for how old he is, he still fucking got it. He's oh yeah, no. Um, uh, he uh, he routinely trains at uh, Gold's Gym Venice here and there. So oh, yeah. one of my goals is if I ever do get over, if I ever schlep back over to Southern California, I'm going to go train at Gold's Gym Venice and see if I run into him. Now, if I do run into him, I will faint. So <laughs> I hope someone's there to video that. So that's our throwbacks, man. That's our throwbacks. So now uh, we are going to dip a little bit into pro gaming circuits. Now, I know jack nor shit about this, so Brad's going to have oh, to yeah. go ahead and something, inform me. Something that started off with, competitive multiplayer online okay with a game i believe the first one and again don't quote me on this one first one that i believe they actually started like a pro circuit for okay is a game called league of legends okay now it's still a multiplayer massive multiplayer online one okay not an rpg okay so there's no there's no storyline or like there's no real storyline you don't i mean the characters that you can play as do come with their stories okay and you can look them up on like you can look up cinematics for them on youtube you can okay if you have the game you can look at the character and it gives you a paragraph story explanation okay now i believe that's the first one they actually came out with like an actual on like an actual uh gaming circuit for where it's actually like a it's actually pro gaming they have worldwide tournaments for it now. Okay. There's literally, you get game, you get teams from Korea, America. Um, I believe there's a German team. I bet they're the most efficient. Just saying. No, uh, actually, it usually comes down between a team from Korea and a team from America, if if, if memory serves. Mm. It's, I mean, it's it's something, but it's become so much more. Okay. They now have Call of Duty, online world tournaments. They have. A Wouldn't game. they be kind of remiss to not have that in the first place, though? You'd believe. You'd think so, right? Okay. 
But I mean, uh, it didn't really grow until you really saw something like League of Legends. Like, if you have the game, they show news captioning at like in in the launcher for the game. Really, where it show it gives you updates on the news on which team which teams are facing which teams which teams have be- beat which teams. And if you really wanted to go the extra mile, you can actually click on it and you can watch the matches that have been recorded. Okay. But they have, like, Call of Duty World Tournaments now. They've, uh, I don't know about recently, but I think they've recently done, um, they recently, actually, it came to an end, and this is actually going to be a callback, call out for a lot of fans. Um, Rainbow Six Siege. Okay. Rainbow Six I'm is... I'm familiar with that, just Tom, Tom Clancy. Clancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a game written and everything for Tom Clancy. Mm-hmm. Siege is where you have destructible walls. It's They, they really went in-depth with this game. Okay. But they've done world tournaments for that. They also have world tournaments for... Let's see. For Honor. One of... Actually, probably one of the newest games for Xbox One. Okay. It recently entered into its third season. And that's the third season of, like... Third season of tournaments. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Yeah, well, with every new season for all of these games, actually, they come out with new champions, new characters you can play as. Okay. And these new characters can be used in these tournaments. So every season they come out with a new character for new pe- more people to use. Okay, so that keeps, like, bringing people back. Yeah. Terms. Okay, so there's a little bit of incentive it's, to it, there's the, the games are always changing. They're, okay. They're not just staying the same. So they're keeping it interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, especially with Siege, because... What it is is like your counter terrorist unit facing okay. another counter terrorist unit, because I mean you can't just do t- uh, counter terrorists against terrorists. Well, yeah. That's that's for Counter Strike. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> which which they do also have tournaments for. Really? Okay. Yeah, but for that for uh, Counter Strike they do they don't really have characters you select. Mm-hmm. It's literally people select what loadouts they want to use. Okay. And then you just throw them against each other and they kill each other. Okay. Whereas with Siege, there's a lot of strategy involved. Because okay. you can reinforce walls so they can't blow through them. You can set out barbed wire to slow them down. There is a char- there is actually a character you can select as in Siege that sets giant fucking bear traps. Where if you get caught by one, it mo- it immobilizes you until you get out of it. How the fuck do you get out of something like that? So another player has to come by and help you out. Oh man, if I was if I was on the field and someone got caught in a bear trap, like you're on your own, buddy. Like literally, it's a suit. It's like a suitcase that, and it's a girl character. She opens up the suitcase on the floor flat, and then grabs these big ass like spring loaded like pieces of metal and opens them up and puts them back. I don't know if you're describing a video game or like an old Looney Tunes cartoon. I know, right? (laughs) Like that's what it's evolved into. But again, I mean, these all of these things have evolved into something. Like, so when they do these pro gaming circuits, they're like, is it like what I think of in my head where like, it's a massive room full of a bunch of people gaming? Yes. Okay, so they're actually doing it like, in a venue. Yeah. Okay. Like, literally, it's... Some of these events pull crowds the size of cons. Jesus. Like, they've... Oh, yeah. Like, uh, there's... They usually have a stage. They have, an, like, a couple of announcers to give commentary. It's it's a sporting event. Right. Um, And then they have, like, one team on one side of the announcers, one team on the other. All of them are have... All of them have PCs and headsets, so they can't be distracted. They okay. all have microphones, so they can talk to each other. And then you've literally got a stadium worth of people out in the audience that watches on a giant screen mm-hmm. that shows like kind of like an overall thing. And okay. then like each player will have a screen above them to show their character's point of view. Wow. They, they make this shit huge. Do, and, do any of the competitors make money off this? Thing? Yeah. No, no there, shit? There's cash prizes for these. What is it like? What is it reaching to? Um, I want to say it goes into maybe the thousands. I think, like maybe, fuck me, to, like to maybe, play a game. Yeah, Jesus Christ! I it's like I told you before. There is a YouTuber who has apparently accumulated enough money to buy a Ferrari. <laughs> well, no, you know, I can I can kind of relate because it, it kind of sounds, it sounds a little bit. It's a it's a it's competition. Gonna be, this is gonna be a yeah, this is gonna be a stretch in comparison, but it kind of reminds me of powerlifting in that okay, um, competitive powerlifting is it's more well known now thanks to you know crossfit and things like that that has really helped build the powerlifting community but it's still one of those things that kind of feels like like i imagine uh, uh gaming tournaments would be it's, it's kind of like it's almost like punk rock in a way that it's it's small yeah. enough that it still feels exclusive but even in powerlifting in the bigger meets now like mm-hmm. uh uh boss of bosses uh pro raw big dogs those will pay out People can make cash money of those lifts, mm-hmm. and it, and they're making sometimes they're like I think uh, either Pro Raw or Big Dogs in Australia is going to pay out like ten thousand dollars 
to the winner. So for someone to literally stand on a platform with a with a fucking massive barbell on their back, a heavy ass barbell, and picks it pick it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, picking it up, squatting with it, benching with it, that can get them ten grand. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I, I can I can I can kind of I can draw a comparison. So I can kind of I'm, I'm, yeah I'm finding it's, a way to and it's to the same caliber at this right. point, but. I mean, and and the only reason you find that it, the only reason is exclusive, uh-huh. is because it does have such a limited audience. Like, okay. despite how many people show up to these things and watch them, you realize it does have a very limited audience. Kind of like punk rock. Exactly. I can, I like, can, I can relate. Like, who in the hell is gonna want to watch ten nerds play a video game against each other? Right. It's kind of it's, it's the same. It's another nerd. Yeah. It's the same philosophy behind you know who is gonna who. It's exclusive, kind of like punk rock or even like extreme metal is. It's 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 exclu- and that's that's a world where I come from is the extreme music world. And every time you go to a, you've got varying degrees of of shows. You can go to a oh. show with one band, they got you know, fucking thousand people in the crowd. You go to another one, and it's like five. But yeah. those five people in that crowd are like, I know this band, and someone else doesn't. Yeah. So I could see that it's exclusive like that. Oh yeah, and I mean it. It's, and that's the thing. Like you don't expect some of these. Uh, turnouts, mm-hmm. go on YouTube. I'm going to have to check that out, man. Go I remember... on YouTube, look up some of these events. I recommend League of Legends because I think so far, like, they've been around the longest for, like, actually pro circuits. Okay. And, like, they have established teams. Okay. And then, okay, here, let me put it this way. At one of the last, like, tournaments for League of Legends, and this is how big it's gotten. You, are you from, You're familiar with the band Imagine Dragons. No. No? No. Oh, they wrote, like, Demons, uh, I believe they wrote Radioactive? Yeah, Radioactive. You've never heard those? No. Listen to that shit. Okay. But literally, this band, and they are very popular. Okay. Um, This band, I guess, was either they were asked to do it, or they're familiar with it, and they did it themselves. Right. They wrote an entire song for a tournament. Oh, okay, well, like if you, it's not too unfamiliar. Yeah. Like uh, Avenged Sevenfold wrote a couple songs for Call of Duty. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, but that's that was specifically for Call of Duty Zombies. Oh, so and these guys wrote a song just for a tournament. Just for yeah, they wrote they literally well not even just for the tournament for the actual game. Oh, okay. look, go on to YouTube, look up Imagine Dragons, and it's the song is Warriors. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a taste. It's fucking awesome. Honestly, if you hear it for the first time and you get the context of the song, it'll make your balls drop. Well, it's okay. I'm like, it's, I, I can I can understand that. Like I love. Uh, I did concept records, you know? Oh, yeah. So, like, uh, there's a band from Germany called Blind Guardian, and they do, uh, they have a record called Nightfall in Middle Earth. Yes. And it is an entire record about the Silmarillion. So, I can, I'm, 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 oh, yeah. Smelling what you're stepping in because I've thought myself of, of dabbling into the world of concept albums and writing yes. music just for it. And I might, I might, you never know. Yeah, like, literally, I think it was the 2016 tournament. Oh, fuck. Where, I mean, and I think it might have been, I don't know if it was like a championship thing or if it was just like the tournament itself. Right. But, I mean, literally, it, it was, they they did a whole, like, if you watch the music video, they did the whole cinematic music video mm-hmm. around this game. Well, no, fucking Blind Guardian did that too. Blind Guardian did that too. Oh, they, they actually did, did something they for They did it for World of Warcraft. They did a, ah, they have a music video called, uh, yes. for a song called uh, Sacred Worlds. It's the first track off of. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I'm familiar records. with that one. They put At, it to their cinematic, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I, I'm, uh, I'm crossing the stream here. Yeah. Um, that's, that's fucking cool. I, I, that's, that's informative. So, next, we're going to talk about comics. We're going to get into some comics, but it's All not right. going to be, it's not going to be unfamiliar territory. Now, Starting off, I need to be I need to be honest. I don't know everything about comics. I I get in and out of them. I, I try to keep up as best I can. I've been reading them since I was a kid, um, and I'm heavily invested in some of these stories. But there are things that I don't know. So I'm going to talk about some comics right now. But in the future, it, you know, you the listener, we would like you to get a hold of us. Send us comics you want us to read and talk about. So there will be an email that we'll, we'll announce at the end of the show that you can send these questions to and these requests because I like the idea of, of taking some comics that the listeners want to hear us talk about and then reading them and putting them in part of the show. So this will be a reoccurring segment talking about comics. But today, I want to talk about the run of Star Wars comics that's been coming out of Marvel since 2015, since they kind of shuffled the canon and all that. These comics are fucking undeniably some of the best fucking comics to come out, in my opinion, relating to one continuing storyline. I mean, they have added so much to the overall Star Wars universe that it's it's 
there's a lot of stuff in there that's just it, it, it rocks you it hits you hard like in 2015 they revealed in one of the first run of comics the star wars title that you know bespin cloud city was not the first time luke engaged vader right mm-hmm. you know he met him once before on, a, on an operation and uh he vader knows that this kid he's fighting is the guy that blew up the death star vader knows this vader sees the lightsaber that luke busts out and he noticed like oh hey. shit and he asks him he asks him he grabs him by the hands like where did you get this because vader knows that's that's hey that's that's, that's mine. his lightsaber that's mine that was mine and so that starts to to it kind of gets the gears turning in vader he doesn't know what is going on here this kid that blew up the death star somehow has his old lightsaber and i'm, I'm assuming he the, knows the only he, one he managed to keep from his young days right exactly <laughs> so they know that he, anakin knows that obi-wan had that lightsaber so this kid obviously had some interaction with obi-wan right yeah. but why so vader's trying to figure out why so in the comics well, he actually but wouldn't you think that vader would like know that because i mean well in, he, he knows in, he knows in, that it came from obi-wan well, but I, what i mean is like in a new hope you know he like in the scene where Vader and spoilers, but I mean this movie's like how old? Forty years old. Forty years old, and I mean if you don't know what it is, you've been living underneath a rock, and you need to go fucking see it, right? Um, but in A New Hope, in the scene after, like literally right after he kills Obi Wan, right? He knows he he just killed Obi Wan. He knew Obi Wan was on the Death Star. He knew that Obi Wan did not come alone, right? He turns around, he starts walking towards the door, and you hear. Uh, Han yelled, "The door, kid! The door!" Right, and literally Luke blows up the blows the door, and like the blast door is closed. Right, does I mean Vader was walking towards the blast doors when Luke Vader, did that? Do you Vader think, saw think, the kid, and yeah, then of course he, you know, and so he knows in the comic he knows he's fighting that kid that was on the Death Star. Yeah, he knows he has his lightsaber. So, you know, spoilers: Luke gets away. You know, the band lives and all that, right? But. What Vader does is he then, they go through this whole arc in the Vader comics that he hires Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. And he, he hires Boba Fett to find out who the kid, who that kid was. Who blew up the Death Star? I want to know his name. I want to know who this kid is. No more disintegrations. Right. Yeah. Well, no one, no, no one still knows why he said that. There's got to be a reason behind There's, why the, Vader the said fan, that. The fan theory is that Boba Fett is the one who killed... Uh, I read that one, the Owen Lars and Aunt Peru. yeah Lars yeah. and Aunt Peru, right? So, because I so mean, he, you see a couple of burning skeletons, right. and you know Boba Fett likes to use flamethrowers. If you know anything about the Star Wars, universe. if they if they ever fucking clarify that, that'd be fucking cool. That would be. But he hires Boba Fett, and Luke has this thing where he has to, he goes back to Tatooine to Ben's hut mm-hmm. in the Jutland wastes, and he gets his journal. Now, when he's at the hut. That's when Boba Fett finds him. You know, Boba Fett's been tracking him. So he has this fight with Fett, man. And Luke gets away by the skin of his teeth, right? But now Boba Fett has the kid's name. Yeah. So Boba Fett, they, they, they fight. Luke Both Skywalker, live. yeah. So he goes to Vader on the deck of a ship. It's not a Star Destroyer, but it's a ship. And he tells Vader, this kid's name is Luke Skywalker. And they have this beautiful interaction between Vader and the Emperor. Because Vader's pissed. Well, like, yeah. how, how's, how does this kid have a, a Skywalker name? My kids are dead. My kids died with my wife, right? Yeah. So he has this, this confrontation with the Emperor. That's tense and shit because, you know, the Emperor is like, oh, fuck, he found that out. So at this point, there's this beautiful panel where it's Vader looking out the screen of this, this, this starship, and you can they, – they, they display how angry Vader is. By, you kind of see like a trembling in the panel maybe. You see the, you see the, 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 the – windows on the starship start to crack oh vader's shit. so angry he's fucking cracking these windows and it's a beautiful panel because you you can you can put your head in vader's and you can see that oh, like at this moment he's now his whole life has changed at this point well yeah and I mean, he now the whole he's reason got, he's done what he's done is because he figures his wife and kids are yeah dead. he's off the deep end right why live right so he, that's that's what makes him take that sharp downturn to the dark side and really delve into it but now he has to realize that holy shit i have progeny out there and this changes things for him because I even mean, he gives it away in Empire Strikes Back. His whole thing is he's going to train Luke to a reform his family, but in his own twisted way, it's like no, now we're going to rule the rule of galaxy, right? So this is where you see that. That's the seed of that that scene in Empire Strikes Back, and they just keep making it better and better. These comics just get better, and they have comics for Poe Dameron for the the sequel trilogy from The Force Awakens, and those are amazing because they really 
Poe Dameron maybe didn't get the most time yeah. in The Force Awakens. Now, granted, oh. they have a, they had a lot to fill in that movie. Yeah. But these comics flush that character out even more, and you start to see more of his bravado. And oh, they really bring they, in Poe They Dameron. really, they really go deep on Poe Dameron. That sounded worse than I wanted it to sound. <laughs> but they really, they really flush that character out. And then they have comics. It, within the Star Wars main title, they take these little tangents, and they show... Uh, ben Kenobi in the desert and what he's doing and what he's up to in his journey of what the fuck did he do? It's actually it did a lot. He did a lot, and it's really interesting because like you see that, especially when they do those arcs, Obi Wan has to learn how to not be Obi Wan. Like he can't yeah, he can't jump in and help everyone. He has he to go back. He has to be old Ben, and he has to he has to disappear. Like he can no longer be a Jedi, and that's what he spent his entire life building towards, right? So he has to, during his time in the desert, he has to learn how to not be him. And so in, in those arcs, you see him struggling with that. You see him wanting to be a Jedi and wanting to help people. And on Tatooine, there's no shortage of people to help. No. But he has to learn to stay out of it. And there's even moments where he's been engaging Jabba the Hutt's uh, gangsters. He's oh, been checking Jesus. them. you know. And, of course, he's always keeping an eye on Luke. And then you start to see a little friction between Owen Lars and Obi-Wan. Um, why, why Lars is so against him. Right, because Obi-Wan at some point is trying to be uh, visible. Yeah. In Luke's life. And it's just something that Owen, War- Owen Lars wants no part of. And then, of course, they do arcs with Yoda. They've done... A, that was a really good arc. A little, a little long in the teeth, but a good read nonetheless. Um, and then they did an arc. They're doing an arc, or they've closed out an arc. I mean, to be honest, my Marvel subscription is on my phone, and it takes six months for new titles to get to me. So oh, wow. I'm a little slower on the, on the uptake. So... Um, they did a, a run with Yoda that's really good. They've done a Darth Maul run that's really interesting. Oh, they actually did the run where he came back with metal feet? No, no, they no? didn't go there. This was prior to the Phantom Menace. Oh, okay, so they actually so ran was, up his character into the Phantom well, Menace. They give a little more context as to why Maul is so militant about the Jedi. Yeah. I mean, like, in the movies, you're like, oh, it's because he's a Sith, right? So well, being a Sith, he would naturally But there be... is more to it. I mean, just his people, and this is speaking from, again, Legends. I'm a huge Legends fan. Okay. And we can reconcile these two things. Exactly. I mean, and that's what I love so much about Legends is that it builds on canon so much. Right. The, his race, Zabrak, right. is usually a very militant race. Yeah. Yeah, they, they explored that in the Clone Wars. With yes. The, the, the Night Sisters arc. Well, that was, yeah, with his brother. Right. Savage Press. Yeah. Yeah. Bad motherfucker. So, and then, of course, what was the... And in the main titles, they've been doing those DV, those 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 arcs that are going different. And then they are, they are building for something. The only thing that's that, that is, they they've done, uh, of course, the Shattered Empire comics, which take place after uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. They what they are not ex- exploring just yet. And this is this is interesting. And I think that this is across all mediums, including books and uh, comics. They are they are not touching that gap of time between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. They have not done anything in that time yet. Nothing. Nothing. Like we have Shadows well, of the Empire from Legends. I was about to say they do. They do have a few. The well, but they mostly kept it to the video games. Mostly the older ones and the book, the Shadows of the Empire book and the book. Yes, you know, but they don't. In 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 the Lucasfilm canon as it is now, they have not touched that period. Oh no. I think they're saving that. Maybe. Um, and then of course you know. So I wanted to just touch on, touch on the Star Wars comics. Now, if you guys have any recommendations, reading recommendations, send them to us, and we will. Uh, read the comic, and over the next episode, we will review the comic. We'll talk about it. So uh, we're going to end the show with just a little bit of uh, news. Um, of course, this is probably going to be Star Wars related because that's really what's coming out. Um, I'll touch on a little more, maybe. We'll find out. But uh, Force Friday was just this last Friday. Uh, so a lot of the new line of uh, toys for The Last Jedi were released. So we're getting looks at Snoke and his Praetorian Guards. We've been getting, uh, you know, a steady stream of news for like the last month or now with the Entertainment Weekly articles and stuff. All very eye-opening and all very tantalizing because, you know, we, we're we going to get The Last Jedi in December and it's going to answer a lot of questions because, you know, everyone that left the movie theater watching The Force Awakens had a lot of questions. So It wouldn't be a Star Wars movie if they didn't. Right. I mean, they, they do have to leave a little bit of mystery in there, right? Yeah. And they got to build to something. They, what they're building to, that's the exciting part, is like not knowing what they're building to. Yeah. Not knowing where it's going to go. Yeah. That, well, and that's, the, that's the, actually the trend with the Star Wars movies is the first one in the trilogy, and I mean, I'm not speaking about any particular trilogy. I'm usually Just speaking vaguely, about both. The first one in vaguely, any trilogy. The first one will leave you with a bunch of questions. The second one will usually start to answer most of those questions. Right. And then the third one will bring 
both of the first two movies together and pretty much just tie a nice, beautiful ribbon on right. it. Which is going to be interesting because, like, you know that there's no finality here. Yeah. Like, Disney is going to make Star Wars movies from here until the oh, end of, of time. Oh, of course. Which is great. I'm in. You want to put out Star Wars 78? Fuck, I'll be there. <laughs> if, you, if you want to put out Star Wars uh, Journeys of R2-D2, I'll watch it. They're probably coming soon from Del Rey books, right? That's true. Star Wars. That R2-D2. is true. They actually did release a couple ones that I'm going to uh, try to read as soon as I can. They did a, a Leia book, and they did a Phasma book. They're fucking going... Phasma? They're going on to Phasma, man. And oh, that's, Lord. That's cool, because that was a... When you watch The Force Awakens, you kind of knew that that character was A... It was they. They did a lot in marketing because they're trying to sell toys. Because oh, that, yeah. that's a cool looking character, right? Yeah. But they didn't give Phasma a whole lot to do in that movie, um, which is not a knock on it. It's just that's a crowded fucking movie, right? Yeah. Um, so they're giving her own book, and I'm kind of intrigued to read about that because a I want to know more about the character, but I also want to know more about the First Order. Like, what makes it tick? It can't yeah. be a carbon copy of the Empire, and it's not going to be. You know, so so getting more context as to how that works, how the First Order works as an entity. You know, they, that's they, gonna be interesting. They, they target star systems instead of just planets. That's that's the difference. It, <laughs> oh, but, but you're not. You're probably not wrong because no, I know. You know, the the first order comes out from the unknown territories. Yeah. Uh, they touched on that in the aftermath books and how they wasn't, how the what w- now wasn't one of the planets they destroyed Coruscant? No, 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 in, no in, they in, weren't in the uh, right star system. I remember, no, that was in uh, Hosnian Prime. That's, that's right. That's what they that's destroyed right. because we don't. We've gotten glimpses in the new canon as to what's going on with Coruscant, yeah. but not a whole lot. Um, of course not. It's a government. Right. Well, well I mean, obviously the New them. Republic is not centered yeah. there. So th- there's there's a story to be told there. Yeah. Um, so as far as news goes, that's probably all I have. I know. Yeah. That's, I mean, a lot of it's Star Wars centric. A lot of yeah. people look well, forward to it. Well, because of course they're gearing up. And we're not going to have a whole lot of news to talk about just because, you know, we didn't start this after, you know, the news thrust that was Comic-Con. But yeah. I'm sure a uh, trailer for The Last Jedi is forthcoming. They did the trailer for Rebels Season 4 today. So that was cool. Yeah. Uh, and of course, when that trailer hits, we'll talk about that as well. So I think that's about it, Bradford. Yeah, yeah. I think we've uh, we pretty we've, much touched on everything. For we've the said all we could say for tonight. So I hope you've enjoyed sitting with us and speaking with us and then listening to us uh, talk your ears off. Uh, we will be back in October for episode two. We will be discussing Alamo City Comic Con. So until then, Bradford, where can they find you? Well, uh, email is going to be forcelosers at gmail.com. Okay. I'm going to set up a Facebook page and a Twitter page. Both will be forcelosers at whichever one it is. Okay. So that's how you can get hold of Bradford. You can find me at heavykevyhkt on Instagram. And of course, if you have any questions for me, you can also send them through the Force Losers email. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys spending time with us, and we will see you next month. (laughs) 